I just want... Man, I just want to stop burying my friends. Have there been uh, a lot that you've lost to, to suicide since? More after here? than I did to it. My summer, my whole year, but in, t in particular my summer, is just pockmarked with anniversaries and deaths, and it's just... You know, it's it's hard. It's hard. I mean, each time it happens, each time it happens, I feel like there's a wall between not doing it and doing it to where, like, it lessens. Right? I was looking at this thing somebody sent me, and they said the suicide rate might as be as high as 44 a day. I was just like, holy shit. I'd like to make it and that far, but sometimes it feels insurmountable. That's what I think like veteran with the sun really is, is like the golden end of the day is to kind of take a little bit of piss out of us in the right way and be like, Hey, I love you. Yeah. It's all right. I love you. Yeah. You're worth your stay. You're worth fighting for like for real. Yeah. Cause that's, I mean, of all the things that like changes a family forever, there's, there's nothing. I can think that's more impactful uh, yeah, yeah. in the worst ways. Welcome to Mic Drop, the podcast where relevancy is irrelevant and we don't give a shit about your feelings. Ladies and gentlemen, as always, it's both an honor and a pleasure to welcome my next guest to the podcast. You spent four years with the 1st Battalion, 6 Marines. You did two combat Afghanistan deployments. He's the creator of Veteran with a Sign. We'll call it a brand. And he's generally a good guy with a really shitty attitude. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the stage. Veteran with a Sign, a.k.a. Zach Bell. Thank you so much. I, uh... I'll have to pay somebody for that intro. That was, yeah. that was the best uh, summation of my life I've there's, ever heard. There's a tip jar by the door, so you can just throw that in there and ring the bell when you when you walk out for good service. It's like Arby's. Yeah. You you seals really got a thing with like ringing bells, yeah. huh? Well, I don't. Some some do. No, yeah. <laughs> they didn't make it out, yeah. I've, I've never done it, but uh, what was the first sign that you ever made? What was the first sign I ever made? Yeah. Um, the first one I ever made was uh, drink water... Uh, take Motrin and change your socks. And that, uh, well, we'll get into kind of how it spawned uh -huh. from there, I guess. But um, a, a couple of sign-related questions just because it's such a a big part of kind of what you've uh, created, which I love. I think it's it's awesome. Um, have you ever been assaulted for a sign that you've held? Like, has anybody ever attacked you over one? Not yet. I mean, Not you, yet. are you starting to do I it? I it, mean, there's a few Navy SEAL ones out yeah, there, so I yeah. feel like this is a warm-up. I think, uh, you know, to me, it like I think you're doing it right if somebody's like tried to run you over or gotten out of their car and tackled you like I have been honked at a lot. Yeah. Like a lot. Or was that part of the sign like honk if you're blank or people No, it like, wasn't. Yeah. It wasn't cuz like when I do it it'll be like me and you should my wife. Yeah. And she's so pumped. Yeah. Uh, but <laughs> like uh we'll go and I'm like I'll there's two sides to each piece of cardboard, right? Yeah. So like I write it and I flip it and so that's that's two content pieces. And then, yeah. like, I'll pivot and, like, I'll pick a bunch of them up. And then people will, like, honk if, if they can read them or, like, they'll slow down. And, yeah. And yeah. Like, what's that? Like, what the yeah. fuck? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a lot of that. If you had to pick a favorite sign that you've done, what would that be? And you can't not, not pick. You have to pick. Mm, a favorite? Yeah. Um,. I don't know. I'm trying not to be too divisive, but it's I think you should try to be divisive. <laughs> I mean, uh, I I think uh I think my favorite like satirical one is every marine is not a rifleman. <laughs> <laughs> that didn't start any fights? Oh, it did. Yeah. It did. Um because every marine is not a rifleman. It's yeah. just a marketing campaign they came up with a long time yeah. ago. And so like everyone stuck to it. Yeah. And I was an infantry rifleman, so I'd take umbrage with it, right? Yeah. Sure. It'd be like saying every SEAL's a dog trainer. Yeah. They're not. Yeah. Um, but nobody goes to enlist over like being other jobs. And yeah. so um, everyone is given like a basic amount of knowledge. Um, and I didn't like how it kind of watered. It does water down the trade craft. The, well, it to, goes with the position. To me, it's like when um, 
when the army gave everybody black braids, like it really fucked the rangers over, and then they make them wear tan ones. Like I think yeah, yeah. There's up. there's so many weird like floppy hats. They all look yeah. like failed pastry chefs, yeah. in my opinion. <laughs> Uh, I'm going to take a a quick break. I I do want to let you guys know um, the way that you can support the show is to support our sponsors. Uh, I know some people don't like to hear ads, but uh, that's how I do what I do for a living. So uh, any support you can show for our gracious sponsors is much appreciated. And again, it does uh, does support the show. So thank you. What are the two key components for canine success? That's effective training and proper nutrition. Fueled by Team Dog brings those two components to your family and best friend. The perfect nutritional balance that results in a higher mental acuity, energy, overall vitality, and even an improved appearance. Every product you will find in my company's store was born from the battlefield and not from the boardroom. Let my life's work help you become your dog's hero. It's like, I don't get it. Um, yeah. I've always found that fascinating that our, I don't know if all militaries do it, but our military definitely does it is we take like pieces of like other countries culture and we're like, yeah, yeah take that from that. Like, yeah. I mean, I think, uh, I, I don't know that I'd say every other country does it, but I think that's, you know, it's kind of part of what America is, is, you know, from an immigration standpoint mm-hmm. and kind of taking the best from, from everywhere and putting it into our own, own thing. So I, I guess from that standpoint, it kind of makes sense, but it, it seems like I would say if you had to kind of pinpoint one country that we've piggybacked the most off of, obviously it's the Brits, but, um, there's still, of course, some, some pretty significant disparities for one, we kicked their ass, you know, so that's number one, but hey, you know, uh, somebody's got to win. Somebody's got to yeah, lose. That's right. What, uh, what is your best childhood memory? Um, Hmm. Probably spending time with my grandfather. Did you? It was like fishing or stories or what? Uh, just in general. He was a he was a general contractor and he would uh, he had some land mm-hmm. and he would drive us around on it and he called it Smithville and he he would like say like this is like where stuff was and it was not it was just like farmland. Oh, that's cool. And uh, but he would like teach me stuff about like being a man and like fixing yeah. things. Was uh. Was that kind of in in place of your dad, or in addition to? Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, yeah. We just got like the classic like he wasn't around. Yeah. They got divorced when I was really young, as a whole thing. But like he was there, and he would uh, teach us a bunch of stuff. And like I remember like eating like out of his garden because people used to actually have gardens yeah. where they grow stuff out of. And he would make me uh, eat vegetables with him every morning, and drink coffee, or he would like go tend to the vegetables. Go out to the garden with a salt shaker. Yeah, 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 and we would eat tomatoes like yeah. they were apples. It's yeah. crazy. It's the only tomato I've ever liked. Um, yeah, no, I, yeah, shit growing out of your own garden just uh, it's just different. Tastes different. Yeah. You know, but what's the uh, the fa- the fast the last full book you read? I'm I'm going through right now is Kitchen Confidential. Um, I'm almost done with it, but it's just an audio book, and oh, it's okay. Anthony Bourdain's book that like sent him and propelled him into fame. Oh, okay. Um, he was such a good storyteller and he has this very, uh, distinct way of talking. Yeah. That's like, it's beautiful. Are you into, uh, cooking? I am. Yeah. Like I'm not big time good, or? I'm not good at it, but like, yeah. it's something that like I'm passively like, yeah, I'm mm-hmm. looking for hobbies that are like outside of like starting a coffee company or yeah. like something like yeah. that. You know what I mean? Like I I'm trying to break the mold wherever I can. Yeah. I, I dig it. I mean, I think, uh, you know, being a little bit out of the box from a veteran standpoint is, is good and important because we do get kind of keyhole into a lot of the same, uh, same things, you know, we definitely play it safe. Yeah. Uh, what is your morning routine on a typical day when you're in town? So my morning routine is I get up with my wife and, um, my kids get them prepped for school and then going through all the projects we have to do in our new home. We're doing things like updating fixtures and outlets and the floors are literally getting redone today yeah, and uh, things like that. And then just um, looking through all the work I have to do for my job uh, where I work at with Black Rifle Coffee and um, all the other stuff I do with Veteran with this Eye. Yeah. What uh, what do you do at Black Rifle? I help them to create content in particular, like stuff for Tennessee. Oh, okay. That's, is that uh, is in regards to the, uh, the plant that's there or? Yeah. yeah. So, um, I think 90% of the items that are sold, coffee, uh, of the coffee that's sold, comes from uh, a place, uh, Manchester, Tennessee, which is famous for Bonnaroo, right? The big outdoor festival that comes all, uh, once a year. And uh, now Black Rifle Coffee, which yeah. is actually called Coffee County. Oh, no shit. Yeah, yeah. That's I don't, cool. I don't know if they knew that when they did it, but yeah. like, it's, it's really cool that it happened that way. Yeah, that's awesome. 
Uh, where are you originally from? I'm originally from Memphis. Oh, really? Yeah. So you're a Tennessee boy, born and born and raised the whole whole time. Yeah, until I die. Yeah. No oh, shit. Yeah. Look, you love that fucking state. You're a volunteer. I didn't say that. <laughs> I mean, Knoxville's cool, but it's just like it's got its own thing too. I mean, Tennessee, so it's got the the three stars, and it's for the three different types of uh, geography that are there, geography that are there, and um, yeah, I grew up in Memphis, and that's a very um, interesting place to grow up. Yeah. Um, it's very diverse. It's um, at that time in particular, it was not the best place to live. Yeah. Um, and it hasn't gotten better from what I understand, but I was really anxious to enlist in the Marines to say the least. And, uh, Nashville where I live now is, you know, it's the capital of the state. It's very famous for, um, all the bachelorette parties that happen, the music that's there. And it's got a real kind of a creator vibe to it. Yeah. And I, you know, I like uh, being outside and it's nice. Yeah. I mean, it seems like, uh, Nashville is, is a lot like, <laughs> most places in texas as far as people are are moving there in fucking droves like it's just exploding right can i swear yeah i wish you yeah would. okay you you wish i if, would if, if you don't i'd be disappointed okay yeah. again i want to i want to listen and obey yeah. I, I understand right? yeah i understand no um wait what are we talking about <laughs> no, i don't know um <laughs> this couch is really throwing me off just two dudes and yeah I'm, no well, there, um, can, there can be more no no we're fine no, we're fine good uh no it's um it's it's weird because it, it took COVID for people to realize that places like New York and LA and Chicago sucked. Yeah. I knew that the first second I was there at any one of those places. Yeah. And so um I'm kind of endlessly fascinated with that concept that like people for so long like put themselves in these positions in these places that just, you know, aren't the best place to live. I mean, I don't know, I guess businesses and stuff are there, but it doesn't seem like fun to me in general. Right? Like New York's crowded, <laughs> you know, LA's like a failed state basically. And like, I just don't get it. So people are like pulling into Texas and Tennessee in the South, but we're full, like go away. Yeah. Like we don't need any more. I'm set. Yeah. I think it's the same way here. I mean, it seems like Tennessee, Texas, and Florida, like half mm -hmm. the country has moved to one of those three places in the last two years. Yeah. The SEC, like the yeah. South's always been yeah. awesome. Like, yeah. It's, it's nothing new. <laughs> like, yeah. yeah, no shit. Yeah. Yeah, the SEC. I mean, that's a whole other fucking story. But Jesus, they just uh, man, it, it's like a, it's like the pros versus the rest of college. You know? Yeah, it's great. Yeah, uh, did you have siblings growing up? I do. I have a brother and a, a half sister. Either of them serve? Mm -mm, no? Just me. Were they supportive of you doing it? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Uh, did you play any sports in high school? I was what can only be described as a troubled youth. Is that right? Yeah, yeah. If you can believe it. It's hard to believe. Um, I think you should delve into that. And I mean, so my parents got divorced when I was really, really young. Um, you know, it was just a classic, um, you know, raising of like, you know, my father was an alcoholic and abusive and all these things. And so I got divorced when I was really young and we lived in lots of different places until my mother met my stepfather. Yeah. And um, about every year until my sophomore year of school, I switched schools every year. Oh, wow. So I was not really attached to anyone. I'm, I'm not really attached. Like, I don't have that idea of, like, I went to this place yeah. or this amount of time. There's no alma mater for you? Um, I mean, not really. I graduated from a very, very small independent Baptist school. Yeah. Um, and uh, it was a class of 28. Holy I was the 28th shit. person. And, like, yeah, yeah, it was wild. Dead last, huh? It was wild. Yeah. And they, I mean, they they treated me like a like a raccoon. They were trying to, like, house train. Yeah. Like, cause they had, they, they'd all been together at a small independent Baptist, um, upbringing for a long time. And I was like, a, you know, I was like a wild animal yeah. that got brought in. You come in and fuck everything up. A dumb wild animal that got yeah. brought in. I remember yeah. that because I was so far behind in everything. Yeah. So you didn't play any sports? Mm -mm. No. no, I was just like never around. I mean, like I did like baseball and stuff, but it would be like through like church leagues and like upwards and yeah. things like that. But I mean, would you character characterize yourself as athletic as a kid growing up? Yeah, I would. I mean, I would say so, but like, oh, and my kids are doing like sports in their schools now. That's just not something that was like ever available. And yeah. Like, we didn't really have the finances yeah. either. Like, I yeah. kind of always got the feeling that like we just did the free stuff. Yeah, because we did. That's <laughs> yeah. what it was. Where Where did the uh, the switch happen or the the incentive to join the military? Like, what what was the the turning point? Nine eleven. Really? Nine eleven. Yeah. Like. Just hands down, that, hands down, nine yeah. eleven. I mean, I, I, my uncle served in the Marines too, um, in the first Gulf War. Yeah. So, what, 
Where were you at when that happened? I was walking to school. I was walking to the school bus stop, actually. Yeah. In, in what grade? Okay, so 2001, I graduated. I think I think it's either 7th or 8th grade. I can't yeah. remember. Wow. Um, but I remember I was walking to the school bus stop. My mother called, and she's like, I need you to stay home. I don't know what's happening. And I uh, you know the handle at the top of the backpack. I used to call it the little brother handle because yeah. I'd always pull him, pull him around by it. Yeah. <clears throat> and so I was like, hey, come here. And he's like, well, we're going to be late. And we've gotten in trouble, you know, like we were late and all these different things. I was like, come back. And he's like, I'm not going. I'm going. And I was like, we got to get back inside. And I, t- I remember I turned on the TV and uh, I, she was just like, turn it to the news, my mother. And uh, when I did, I turned it on. I don't know what channel it was, but I think it was everywhere at that time. Yeah. The second plane made impact. Uh, I don't know how quickly after turned on, but it felt like immediately. Yeah. I remember watching it live. Just oh. and and it was basically right then. You're like, I'm joining the military. Well, like as the event started to unfold and everything, and I'd always you know heard about the military and all the different things. You know, I didn't. I didn't really do a lot of the, like. Um, Digging and like learning about stuff that I should have done. Yeah. Um, there was no one. There was really no one there to teach me either. Mm-hmm. Um, like about like if you want to be an officer, you got to be a congressman to like write off. And yeah. To go to like one of the academies or go to ROTC. Like I didn't know any of that stuff. Um, I was like, I just want to serve and fight and protect my country. Yeah. And there was an opportunity for them to pay for college and do all these things and advance myself. And historically, there is no greater like ladder or path to success. Um, or climbing socioeconomically than the military. Like, it's the number one way to, like, change your family's yeah. um, path generationally. Yeah, no, for sure. Um, so for all of high school, were you pretty dialed in as far as wanting to do that, or did that waver and kind of move around at all? Um, I mean, like, high school, because I was, I was, you know, really troubled. Um, well, like, by troubled, what do you mean? Like, Drugs, fucking breaking shit, stealing stuff. Assaulting, all the above. Like everything? Like all the above, yeah. Like I, I just looked at, I was like, I, I just want to do whatever I want whenever I want. And so I, I and guess. there was no one there. My mom was like working. I had a car. Like if I had money in my pocket, I was going to like make chaos. Were you dealing drugs and shit to get money? Mm, nope. No. Nope. Stealing shit? Like how were you getting money? I and, mean and like I had, I, had, I had jobs. So my stepfather um, owned a a chain of auto shops and I would work for him. I worked for him during the summer and I bought a, um, a Ford Ranger from him. Oh, okay. And he bought from AutoZone. Yeah. It was one of their parts, livery vehicles. It was the first car I ever had. But yeah. And then I was in high school when I was old enough to drive. I was working at UPS. Really? And Because uh, they have, they pay a lot and you only work four hours at a time. And yeah. so I would drive home, drop my brother off, go to work, be done by like 8.30 or 9 and they pay a lot. So the, uh, and then I was just, like, drinking, you know, just doing, like, dumb high school stuff. I don't know. Like, all the stuff that, like, I don't want my children to do, I was doing. Yeah. So. But I guess the, to me, it, it seems, um, I don't know, contradictory, counterintuitive a little bit. Like, if you're kind of singularly focused on joining the military and, and wanting to, you know, protect freedom and serve your country and mm-hmm. all of that, while at the same time kind of just, like, fucking off and doing dumb shit, it, it seems a little opposing well so my life until i turned 18 i just viewed as not my own Mm -hmm. is the best way to describe it like i didn't have enough freedom to do all the things i wanted to do i didn't have access or resources and like i'd always wanted i'd always had this idea of the military but after 9 11 i was like i'm going to do it and then as i got closer i did start to have some hesitancy of like what it meant yeah but i don't know if you remember in like 2006, 2007, they were throwing around cash like it was nobody's business. Oh, yeah. Like thirty, fifty thousand dollars $50,000 on entry and reenlistment bonuses. It was crazy. Yeah, I think they're doing that again now because they're having such a hard time attracting people with the uh, woke mob mentality that the uh, upper echelon of, if you want to call it leadership, is uh, enacting on the military. But Yeah, which is wild because they have the, they had a complete opposite problem when I was going in. Like, yeah. They didn't even like leave the recruiting office is what they told told me they're like people just come in here every day yeah like a whole generation of people like just came in there were like hey i want to yeah and so like it, you know just kind of being a dumb kid right yeah. and then like as i could you know when i finally like saw that like i was 18 and like i can make decisions i was like this is what i want to do yeah and uh, my cousin also joined the marines basically about four years before i did and um i'd seen him and some other people but him in particular left this kind of like um 
resounding impact on me, the change of him as a person. Yeah. Right? Like, because, I mean, he was basically like my older brother. Yeah. And, you know, he was, you know, he's uh, my inspiration for chaos in a lot of ways. <laughs> and, uh, like, I don't know, we were just, we were just kids in a lot yeah. of ways. Like, every everything I look back on now, I'm not sure if it was really harmless or if we were wild or whatever, but, yeah. like, it's it's hard to view that sometimes, I yeah. guess. Did he uh, go to Iraq or Afghanistan? And he went to Iraq twice, yeah. 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 Uh, he served in the Marines, and um, he he went to Iraq twice, yeah. Yeah, so I'm assuming he went then before you joined, right? Yeah, he's about, he's about four and a half years older than me. Yeah. yeah. Did he? Uh, did any of his stories further motivate you, or were they scary to hear in high school, or what kind of? How did you take those? No, it was it wasn't so much like scary to hear as much as it. I mean, there's also like so many other factors that were happening at this time. Like, you're talking about the evolution of like internet culture as a whole, like you know, live leak and all those videos from Iraq and stuff that were dropping online. Yeah. Like all those moto videos. Like that was like. That was some crazy shit. It was it was wild. You nobody ever seen anything like that. Yeah. You had like Tom Brokaw in Vietnam, and then it was like system of a down or whatever, and dude just like kicking in doors, being like contact left, you know. Yeah. And like I was seventeen, eighteen, playing yeah. like Call of Duty and stuff, and yeah, I was like for real, like let's, let's go, let's go, let's go. Yeah, right. And so like the information <laughs> started to like just come in in droves, yeah. and um, I don't know, just I mean, uh, there was something about the way he carried himself that. That really stuck with me. Yeah, yeah. Talking about live leak, the uh, to me the thing because you know I was on active duty when when a lot of that was kind of going yeah, on, yeah. And, and you know seeing um the other side, you know, seeing like the propaganda videos and like the the snipers' point of view from you know like coming from the enemy. Yeah, yeah, like, like all that stuff was there. It was fucking crazy. Yeah, it was wild to see it. Like I was like, oh, they have cameras too. And I'm like, ah, oh, you're an idiot. Of course they do. Like. Yeah. But to me, you know, being, being on active duty, like I was when when Live Leak really kind of blossomed into where you know it was like there were videos everywhere of all kinds of crazy shit. It was like um, it was like snuff videos almost, you know, like military style. Like it was just like the shit that you were seeing was unprecedented. But being like I was an instructor at the time, I went from you know I, I came back and then went into an instructor role and. And uh, seeing that shit after having been there and putting mm -hmm. kids in that were going over there like that was kind of a mind fuck seeing some of that stuff. And I, I didn't watch much of it because of that. It was just like I'd watch and be like, I can't fucking watch this shit. You know, it was fucking terrible. Yeah, the internet, it's very recently where they put rules on it. Yeah. Like it used to just be chaos. Like it was like the ocean. Yeah. You had to figure out how to navigate it on your yeah. own. And yeah. now there's, you know, left and right lateral limits to it. And I don't know if that's good or bad yet. Time will tell, but. Yeah, I, it, it's hard to say, you know. I mean, the, the freedom of speech should be all-encompassing and, um, you know, it's, it, but it's tricky in, in that, you know, when every swing and dick has access to it, like there are certain things that, you know, it's like with alcohol or cigarettes mm -hmm. or pornography or, or whatever. It's like there are certain things that it's not good to have kids have access to and there's a lot of things on the Internet that fit that bill. And so it's like how do you kind of tap dance around, you know, making sure that we live in a free society and that and that people can say whatever they want and have access to whatever they want while also not being total dipshits about, you know, how, how we raise our kids and, and expose, uh, you know, subsequent generations to certain things that, that probably aren't good. You know, it's a, it's a tricky thing to balance. Yeah, I mean, looking back on it, it was way too much and somebody should have yeah. been paying attention to me. Um, but, <laughs> like, uh, yeah. me and um, Derek Carver were talking about this recently, you know, and he introduced uh, us as well. And he's he's always like, rawr, 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 rawr. Yeah. yeah. And you have to, you have to like, put that through a filter. Yeah. And the filter was... Um, <laughs> We were talking about, like, how do you decide, like, what should be up and what should be out? And he said something like, there just needs to be a committee, but the committee needs to be, like, real people. Yeah. Right? And I was like, that's actually, like, probably the best thing because there is a committee now, right, on these different platforms, but it's all the same type of person. Yeah. Well, the other thing, too, is, you know, the committee of real people, real people to you and I may not be real people to the people who are on that committee. They may think, fuck those guys. They don't know what they're talking about. I mean, that, I think that's the problem with any governing body of anything mm -hmm. is, is that, you know, one person's idea of true and just and the right person to, to be overseeing 
uh, you know, big, big picture decisions isn't going to be what somebody else thinks is the right person, you know? So it's, uh, how do you, how do you decide that? Yeah, I think it needs to be like voted on like survivor back in the day. Like everyone yeah. cast a ballot in secret. Yeah. That way people don't like, uh, grandstand on the decisions yeah. of what they make or like, just like, Oh, my voters will love this. Just be like, yeah. I don't know. I voted, I yeah. voted for Mike. Yeah. Like, you know, <laughs> like yeah. nobody has to know. Yeah. But there, we, we live in a time now where people are so worried about the, um, how history is forever now. Yeah. And so they don't want to be caught like five years down the line of being the person that said like, yeah. Oh, I, sh- I shouldn't have said that. Or, yeah. And it's, it's weird because you can see people like actively negotiating that yeah. in real time being like, Oh, I don't want to say anything that would be bad in like yeah. five years. Yeah. No, people are, uh, are uh, absolutely gun shy now about, I mean, it's like every, everything they post or say or do or whatever. Is so like filtered and run through a, like a PR process almost. Not it's you. Fucking, not me for sure. I, I just don't you. give a fuck. But uh, yeah, I mean, I, I've I've just kind of always been that way. And and you know the other thing too is like this show as an example. I don't. Well, there's two things. I mean, one like you know I, I have businesses or or brands that I'm calculated in how they're presented. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, this isn't one of them. Yeah. You know, it's like so if if it's a product that's for a a target demographic, then I'm going to, uh, you know, have it set up so that it, it, uh, you know, is, is designed or strategic towards that, that demographic in this case, like this never, never was what I did for a living. You know, Mm -hmm. it's not my main, main thing. It's not, um, the only way that I make a living. It's part of it now. Uh, but you know, I've always been, you know, Hey, this is a platform to, uh, to truly get whatever you want off your chest and to have people on, that have interesting stories that can do the same, you know, and they're not, not neutered or, uh, filtered or, or whatever. Interestingly though, you know, some guests you have on, you can tell that's how they are though. And so they conduct themselves in a certain way mm-hmm. to make sure that what they say is what, what they think should be said or how it needs to be said or, or how a publicist would coach somebody to say something. Some, you know, absolutely do not give a flying fuck and will say whatever, whatever they want, you know, and, yeah. it's, and it's usually a, a direct, reflection of of what they do what they're involved with yeah. and, and whatever what they're you know trying to represent which i, I get it i just i don't want to be um in, into that um, i don't want to get sucked into that fucking realm of of uh, giving a shit about what uh, what we talk about but yeah because if you're if you're hindering like um if you're scared to really say how you feel then you never really know like anything about yourself and that epstein didn't kill himself like I mean, that's what I heard. <laughs> yeah, that's, how, that's what I heard. That's how I first learned about yeah, you. That's crazy. Like that was literally like somebody sent that to me and they're like, yeah. this is the best Navy SEAL ever. <laughs> and like I. Uh, that's debatable. Oh, well, I, I don't know. I, I think. If I think, that's what constitutes making a team guy good, then we're, I, I we're mean, in deep shit. Yeah. I mean, Marcinko might be the best. I mean, yeah. just the fact that he he named something. be He gave something a, a different number so the enemy would think there were more teams. Right. Yeah. Isn't that the legend? I mean, there's so many different, uh, who knows if that's fucking true, uh, sayings or, or, you know, legends or whatever you want to call it. It's, it's hard to know. He might be my favorite person historically. Yeah. Like, like that they're like, Hey, try and break in on these bases. And yeah. he was like, all right. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> and then he did. Yeah. And they're like, no, 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 please don't do that anymore. That um, awesome. but no, I had to heard about it. I was, I was like, whatever. Somebody sent me the clip. I remember the first time and I was like, look at my phone. I was like, okay, yeah, it's a Navy SEAL guy. And then, like, you're like, blah, 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 blah. And then talking about your dog. And I was like, oh, that's a nice dog. And you're like, and Epstein didn't kill himself. Yeah. And, like, the best part is the delay on, uh, was it Jesse? Yeah. Is the delay. He's like, okay. <laughs> like, yeah. He, yeah. he breaks like, up because it hits his ear. Yeah. It's, well, that, that and I think, you know, all those guys just kind of go through the motions on most of their interviews anyway. So, like, it took him a second for it to even register what I said. You yeah, know? not anymore. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, they've definitely got a delay built in now. Yeah, yeah. Well, hopefully I was a part of that. But Well, no, it was something that had to be said. I actually really appreciate I, I think there needs to be much more radical candor when we're talking about things in general, like not argumentative, not being argumentative. I can't say the word right now. Yeah. Not arguing for no reason, but, yeah. um, like, we do have to really be honest sometimes in a way that is removed from emotion because, I mean, there's just too many things that, like, we're not honest about, and it's just yeah. kind of weird that we're not. Yeah. Like veteran military culture for one. Yeah. Uh, are there any glaring examples that stand out to you that you wish were more uh, honest or prominent out there? 
for veteran military culture in particular. Yeah. I mean, that, that was the whole idea behind veteran with the sign. Well, one of them, right. When I started it, I was, I was working in a healthcare company at the time. Um, cause when I got out in 2011, you know, I have a wife and two children and, uh, really have a lot of time to get stuff to really focus on things, but I went straight to school, got a bachelor's, got a master's, worked in a nonprofit and then worked in for-profit healthcare and then COVID hit. And, um, I've always kind of looked at like internet culture as a whole and especially like military veteran culture. And it's just kind of like jumped the rails a little bit. Like yeah. we're, we're definitely kind of eating our own and in some ways we're like super toxic and I just, I don't know. It's just some, it's something that I'm not particularly fond of. And I, I think it takes all of us being a little bit more accountable about it. Yeah. Cause like in my life, in my civilian life, people would always say to me, like, you don't look like a veteran. Yeah. And, uh, I always be like, thank you. Cause what they really <laughs> want to say is like, you don't look like an asshole. Yeah. Like, cause there's a, you don't look like a dirt bag. Yeah. You don't look like you lie about being deployed, yeah. you know? Um, <laughs> Cause like that's that's it though, right? Yeah. And like I had pocket squares and like suits on and stuff, and they would say that to me. And like I'm a pretty well adjusted guy, uh, especially now. But uh, you know, I wanted to try and like take a little bit of humor to that, and try and change the way we look at our culture a little bit. Yeah. And then maybe we can be more honest about what we're doing right, what we're doing wrong, and then hopefully that'll lead us to a place of being like, you know what? I don't feel good. Yeah. Maybe I should get help. Right. So it's all like a, you know what three card Monty is? Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's me doing that on the internet being like, oh, where's the ace? Where's the ace? And they yeah. look and they're like, oh, it's a meme, you know? Yeah. And it's just yeah. me uh, being like, you know, trick fucking everybody. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I'm just trying to, yeah, you know, pull people in. And, but the ace is, I, I want you to take care of yourself. Yeah. You know, I don't want you to take your life. I want you to get better for you and your family. That's the ace. But I can't say that every day. People won't pay attention to it. Yeah. The internet will literally, slow down traffic as you know if i do the same thing over and over again so yeah. i've got to mix it up you know yeah as you guys know uh, health and fitness is a big part of my daily routine and my lifestyle i have a number of guests that come on that uh you know that we talk about all all sorts of things health and fitness related uh, diet nutrition etc uh, i started taking athletic greens a few months ago here uh, for that reason is that it's a uh, all, all encompassing vitamin and mineral supplements, 75 vitamins and minerals. Uh, it's lifestyle friendly, whether you do keto, paleo, vegan, it's dairy free, gluten free, uh, less than one gram of sugar. There's no, uh, GMOs or nasty chemicals. There's no artificial anything in it. Uh, and it's just very nutrient dense and, uh, and gives you that, that supplementation that you need to combat cold and flu season coming up to bolster your immune system uh, and just help with a, with a healthy lifestyle. Um, right now the, the subscription, if you sign up for it, comes with a year supply of vitamin D, which again, uh, is, is crucial to, uh, immune support as well as five, uh, on the go packets, uh, with that first purchase. Um, whether you want to invest in, in your health or just supplement an, an already existing protocol that you have, uh, athletic greens has been a, a phenomenal staple, uh, that I've added into my regimen and I couldn't be happier to be working with them. Uh, if you want in on that deal, go to athleticgreens.com forward slash mic drop. Um, and they, they do a phenomenal job at uh, all the things that uh, health and fitness um, wise need to be done on a daily basis. So check them out. Go to athleticgreens.com forward slash mic drop and they will hook you up with that uh, special deal. From a veteran culture standpoint that uh, stands out to you as being toxic or eating our own or, or what have you, what, what are some of the, the biggest, um, rule, not rule breakers, but the, I guess the, the, the guiltiest of, of, uh, issues in your opinion that way. The things I take the most umbrage with yeah. maybe, um, every Marines a rifleman thing is like top tier for me. Yeah. It's just not true. It'll never be true. It's not true. Is that the camera? It'll never not be true. It's not true. It's not true. It's not true. Right? <laughs> well, so what it does is it waters down the reality of everyone's service. There's a congressman right now. I don't know his name or a congressman candidate, actually, running for Congress in Ohio, which good for him. And um, in his handwritten service record, it says classified of like where he was. And none of that's true. Like yeah. he's just trying to, he's basically just like, put together this whole record that is highly implying that he did stuff that was like top secret. Yeah. 
you know, stuff like what you did, right? Or like just I don't know. Well, even that. I mean, on a DD two fourteen, you're not gonna you're not gonna hide anything. You know, like there's no such thing as classified anything. You know, like not according to this guy. I'm yeah. sorry, you might my, my yeah. guy. Maybe I'm wrong. I know we're in Texas, but yeah. in Ohio they have yeah. rules and uh, they protect their guys. They do, and um, it's just been watching him in particular. So like. What's the issue with that? Nobody really cares what you did. Nobody does. Like, realistically, yeah. if you look like what I did, I just walked around in a circle. Yeah. Like, I would be like, oh, you know, checkpoint one, checkpoint three. You know, there's yeah. stuff that happened along the way, but, like, I really just walked in a circle. I mean, in essence, that's kind of what any of us have, yeah. have really done. If you're on the ground, that's all you're really doing. Yeah. You're just kind of walking around. <laughs> oh, you go pick up a guy, yeah. and then you go back. It's yeah. a circle, yeah. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Maybe you'll use odd numbers or even numbers next time. Who knows? Yeah. It's really, really exciting. Yeah. My name's on my pants. <laughs> like, it's not yeah. that great. Um <laughs> So, but the problem with that is when you lie about that, which no one really cares about, it's the lie that everyone is offended by, you then water down everything else everyone does, Mm -hmm. right? And so when people then go to a point where they ask for help, now all anyone can think is there's this guy who's running for Congress or whatever it is in Ohio who's 100% lying about his military service. How do I know that that guy's not lying? I don't know Mike's not lying. You know, stuff like that. Yeah. I don't know. Mike really needs help. I don't know. He makes up stuff all the time. Yeah. Right. That's, that's like the biggest glaring thing is the bridge between the military civilian world is barricaded with stolen valor. And like, it's our job to break it down in my opinion. Yeah. So, you know, to me, the, the whole stolen valor thing, like has always kind of uh, baffled me. The, uh, the willingness and, and, I guess brazenness that a mm-hmm. lot of people have, whether it's lying about things that they did when they were in, or um, or not even having been in and lied about it. It's mm-hmm. like there's always going to be somebody that that could call you out on that and, and disprove what you're saying. It's weird, especially with y'all's y'all's group. Yeah, there's so few of y'all ever yeah. that have like gone through it. But I, I've met. 40,000 Navy yeah. SEALs, I think. Oh, I know. It's fucking nuts, man. It's, it's you know, I, I was foolish. I thought it was less than that, you know. Yeah. I've met 17 Latrells. Yeah. You know, like yeah. they're all, I've yeah. met them all, yeah. right? I, I think there's like 200,000 people that were on the Bin Laden raid, you know. <laughs> which, that's it's, a lot of helicopters. It seems that way. I don't know how yeah. that bird got off the ground. Yeah. Um, must have been because you were staging it. So, um, <laughs> like a moon landing. Moon landing, yeah. Yeah, yeah. But, no, it's... I, I don't get it. Like I, it's really, it's, it's really really cool that we're all a part of our nation's only all volunteer fighting force in the history of our nation. Like that's really cool. Like not every job's the same. That's fine. Yeah. But like, we have to stop. And if we, if we can't, if we can't be honest about what we did, we're never going to be better in the future. Like that's just reality. Yeah. No, I, I agree. Um, what, what's so speaking of which, and I guess in terms of your kind of career path that way. Mm-hmm. Um, so once you joined, you went to boot camp, you went yeah. to, uh, I'm assuming, Paris in- Island. Infantry school and yeah, all that. Yeah, infantry school, yeah. Um, what was your first uh, experience like when you when you kind of got through the training and checked into the actual 6th six, uh, Marines? I can tell a pretty funny yeah. SOI story, if Do that'll it. help. Yeah. So the School of Infantry, right? If you're an infantry Marine, you go to... If you're in the Marines, you go to MCT, Marine uh, Combat Training. They probably changed it all now. It's 21 days, or SOI, and uh, it's uh, roughly about three months altogether. And uh, it gets to the point where all the instructors come out, like all the infantry guys, and they're like... They give you a pitch, and you're in this big like room, and they're like... The 51 comes out, and like, Hey, what's up, you fucking losers? Do you want to... Do you want to shoot rockets? You want to do explosives? Then you better be a 51, right? And he's like, ah, oh, everybody goes up. And it's like, hey, do you like playing cards? Do you like doing spades? <laughs> <laughs> you could be a mortarman. Yeah. You know, go for it. And then, <laughs> then he comes out. And then I remember there was this machine gunner who looked like, you know, he's built like a fullback, right? Like all machine gunners. And he's like, you want to shoot people down with like a ma deuce, blah, 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 all this stuff. Be a machine gunner, rah, 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 all this stuff, right? And then I remember this one guy comes up. I don't remember his name. It doesn't really matter. He comes up and he takes out a can dip and he puts dip in his mouth. And he goes, you want to be in charge of all those dickheads? Be an 0311. <laughs> <laughs> and so I was like, 0311 it is. Yeah. Um, but um, in 2007, when I arrived at the barracks, man, man, oh, man, it was 
Oof. Um, it's it's weird. It's it's weird how disproportionate it is. But like, I remember showing up to the barracks with all my stuff from like issue, and you're dragging it through the thing, and you're getting cat called. They're throwing stuff at you. They're swearing yeah. at you. And you're like looking for a team leader, and not even really sure what a team leader is. And you're like, oh, you know, like running around with like your big bag. Yeah. And you know, go to team leader and a team. They had just got back from Ramadi at the time, and uh, the team leader's like, hey, I'm, you know, Lance Corporal so and so, I'm your team leader. You know, don't fuck, don't fucking make my life hard. I won't make your life hard. Do you understand? And I go, er, and he goes, what? And <laughs> he's like, don't. He's like, don't do that. And I was yeah. like. I was like, good to go, Lance Corporal. He's like, don't ever do that either. And I was like, okay. <laughs> what the fuck am I supposed to say? I was like, what do I say to you? And um, he's still one of the best people ever. He's really, really kind to me. But, like, you know, he's a very, very smart guy and very nice. His name's Brendan Kelly. I love you, Brendan. And, um, like, he, he was just, like, you were so, like, institutionalized by that point. And yeah. I was just, like, responding the way I'd responded. And he's like, stop, don't do that. It was just, yeah. like, gross. Yeah. But um, then I was like running around the barracks. You know, I don't want to call it hazing because I don't want to get anybody in trouble. But I think you should. If, I mean, you know. you know, we were like doing all sorts of stuff like digging holes, you know, pull ups so you can't do things. Um, were, were there any like physical hazing where it's like mm-hmm. they're actually like taping you up and beating your ass and electrocuting you and like Tabasco sauce and shit like that? Because we did all kinds of dumb shit like that. Yeah. I mean, like, yeah. I but, mean, like. I have this belief that if you're like in a combat MOS, like you're going to get hazed yeah. because there, it's a, it's like <clears throat> jazz. It's real free form, right? Yeah. The goal is to win the war, right? Yeah. With Navy SEALs, the goal is to win the war. Infantry Marines, win the war. How you do that? Take these guns, go do it. Yeah. The rest what, is on you. Yeah. Was and it, so that's a lot of free time and training. Yeah. You know, go out to the woods, lift the thing, do pull-ups, blah, 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 wash your gear, all sorts of stuff. Yeah. Day in, day out. And it's just... You know, doing, um, I remember doing pull ups while uh, we were like reciting like Kazavak nine lines and stuff. You know? What was the, uh, the worst hazing that you got personally? Just that first week. Yeah. Just that first week. Anything in particular? It was a blur. Yeah. You know, being in the shower, plotting points on maps and stuff, like running past doors, screaming. You know, yeah. it, I, it was just a, you're just not sleeping. Yeah. And, um, you learn very quickly if you just, like, shut the fuck up. Like, life gets immensely better. Yeah. Did but you ever, like, just get the shit beat out of you? Mm-hmm. Like, physically beat mm-hmm. out? Yeah. hmm Like, uh... Like, prison shower jumped? I mean... I mean, no. Uh, not, like... <laughs> I, have, I have so many questions about the SEALs now. Um, uh, no. They're, they're all true. Whatever. No. I mean, it was, it was like, um... <laughs> like uh, we would do like map and stuff. So they would make us like torture each other. Yeah. I remember one time this team leader like came up to me and he like went to hit me or something. And cause I had done something wrong. He's like, come here, you dumb boot. That's what they, they call you until you've deployed. Cause you're fresh out of boot camp. And like my team leader came up and he's like, don't ever touch him again. Yeah. He's like, he's mine. And then he like hit me in the back. Of the head. He's like, don't ever do that. Oh no shit. Yeah. But like, he was like, He's like, he's like, you're, he's like, you're my team. It's my job to do this, not anybody else's. Yeah, and that's so, cool. Yeah, yeah. it's very rare. Yeah, my, um, my platoon sergeant was insane though when yeah. I was a boot. Like he's known for being insane. Yeah, like he would just scream and like, <laughs> he got um, he was a drone shutter at Paris Island, but like he has this very deep voice and he'd be like, the story goes is that he got in trouble because he's like, I get really animated, you know. <laughs> 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 and like that's the early 2000s and they yeah. fired him i don't know what he did to like get people like fired them but like i mean yeah. he was just wild always screaming yeah. always like like fly not, off the handle yes yeah. like it was in his blood like yeah. that whole like uh you know instead yeah. of discipline equals freedom it was pain equals discipline yeah which equals freedom so pain equals yeah, freedom. Yeah. but again like if all that stuff if like your police calling stuff right yeah. you're picking up stuff if you just shut up yeah Stop complaining. People that complain to always end up getting picked. And then, like, slowly yeah. you start to fade into the background, right? You're yeah. just like. Be the gray man. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I totally know what that means. Yeah. yeah I'm just kidding. No, I know what you're saying. Yeah. The, uh, all right. So once you got through all that and you kind of um, got to the point where you're deploying, like, what was, what was that first experience like when you, you know, actually landed in Afghanistan, boots on the ground? And kind of walk us through the, that, that whole experience. So my... Um, <clears throat> my my experience was is uh is highly unique because um my wife and I had gotten married and 
we had a plan for like a wedding and everything, but then we found out she conceived our first child. And so, um, I didn't leave with my company. I left with another company, but, um, in March I came home, I came back to Nashville and, uh, she gave birth to our daughter. And like, how long had you been gone at that point? No, three days later I was in Afghanistan. Oh, wow. Yeah. So, um, it was on pre-deployment leave and the whole workup they told us like, dude, you're going to like the Mediterranean, you're going to like go to Australia and like all this stuff, which is, as you know, during that time, it's a death sentence. Yeah. Like being told during the world's longest war that you're not going to go to the war, which was happening a lot to people. Um, just like, dude, I'm going to be a boot forever. I don't want this. Please just, you know, I'll, I'll do whatever it takes. But, um, you know, I hadn't been scared of anything until that point. But when my daughter was born, I held her for the first time. I was like, I'll do whatever it takes to come back here. Yeah. And uh, a few days later, I left. And wow. I was gone for seven months. Um, and I first stepped boots on the ground. We landed in Kandahar Airfield. And, like, my wife's like, what's it like over there? Is it, like, scary? You have no idea what – there's no information. You have no idea what it was like. And I was like, it's okay. There's a Burger King, you know, yeah. <laughs> at the boardwalk. Do you, you saw it? Uh, you I, didn't didn't go to, I mean, it's it's all the same, right? It's all yeah. the, you know, Halliburton stuff yeah. and all that jazz. And um, the boardwalk was this place. It was, like, uh, where all the NATO people were and stuff. And so you'd come off this airfield, and then you go down, and there's a subway at Tim Hortons and a Burger King. And you're like, what the fuck yeah. is happening? This is war? What the fuck? Yeah. And yeah. the people were like, <laughs> that's what people's experiences are. Yeah. That was not mine. You yeah. know, three weeks later, we pushed out for seven months. Yeah. And uh, we were out the whole time. Um, one of the things I like to ask, you know, anybody that, that mm-hmm. has been in combat, because I find it fascinating from mm-hmm. a leadership standpoint, um, was there a point at which um, your higher ups kind of brought you guys in and said, here's why we're here, here's what we're looking to, like, here, here's the mission that we're trying to accomplish, like from a 30,000 foot view standpoint? Yeah, we had a really good battalion commander. Um, uh, at the time, he was Lieutenant Colonel Anthony Henderson. Um, he's still in. He just recently became a general. Congratulations to him. Um, he's someone that I looked up to. He was known for being a troop leader. He even uh, was on the roof of a building, like, directing fire when it took an RPG, and he combat rolled off the top of it, which is, like... As, as what rank? As a battalion commander. God a, damn. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah, he was incredible. <laughs> like, That's good shit. And it was, like, a legend until, like, I knew a guy on his PSD. And I was like, is that real? And he's like, yeah, bro, yeah. It, it happened. That's um, but he had talked to us, and it was about, you know, taking over that part of Afghanistan to, you know, kind of basically, best I took from it is we're trying to interdict the supply of opium as is directly yeah. related to financing uh, terrorist operations there and all around the world, yeah. which is realistically what we're doing. And um, I'd never seen anything like it. Right. Like everyone had taught, you know, I'd heard, everyone I was with had just got back from, you know, Ramadi in like 06, 07. So they were like in a city, yeah. you know, and uh, we were in the middle of nowhere. Just you'd hit a field and a click or two, there'd be nothing. I mean, I remember one time we went out to like the outskirts of the city and there was just camels and like it's just flat, flat as that table. And it's just yeah. like, OK, I guess I guess we'll turn around now. Yeah. And um, it was a lot of that. And it was really, really hard living, living out of patrol bases, which is not what they were. They were just compounds we took over, cut holes in the side of them. And, you know, I didn't call home for three months. Yeah. Do you remember the uh, the first, like, legitimate gunfight you got into? Mm-hmm. It was great. Tell us about it that. It was great. Um, the no shit there we were version. All right. You guys got any cigarettes or anything? <laughs> um, got a can of fucking old dip. Uh, no, I, did, I just quit, too. I did. did uh, yeah, I did um, um, vets. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. I want to talk about that, actually, because uh, I feel like it's important to talk about. Um, I owe them a lot. Um, so <laughs> I'm trying to think about it. So we were a big part of, you know, you go in, you insert, and then, like, you, you look at the battle space. It gets rearranged, and um, our platoon is being shifted from one area to another. And uh, we were, like, holding. We were just in, like, a holding um, zone for a little bit, just, like, waiting you know, as different platoons moved to, like, to south of us and rearranged and took over a new AO. And, uh, like, I was just on a wall. I was just on a wall next to a guy. And we had, like, shot at stuff, but, like, it wasn't really, like, anything, you know? Like, the first thing you see, like, I'd saw explosions. I'd seen RPGs and stuff like that. And I remember, like, oh, that's 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 intense. But, like, you're training for so much of it. You're just, like, hypervigilant um, in possibly the wrong way, or at least I was, mm-hmm. like, and again, you don't really know what you're looking for because everyone who was in charge of you doesn't know what they're looking for either. That was a big thing I remember is no one had ever been here. No one knew what this looked like. 
we're all equal now. Because before they were just like combat deployed team leaders and stuff, but they were like, no, bro, and this isn't it. And uh, when I came back after my daughter was born, a bunch of Marines um, had gone on Libo and out of the whole unit, and they did not pass certain tests. <laughs> what do you mean? I don't want to say anything <laughs> else, but um, they rearranged the entire company. And so yeah. I got moved to a different platoon, like as the mission launched. Yeah. People I hadn't trained with. People I knew, but people I hadn't trained with. And uh, it turned out to be the greatest blessing ever, and I met like one of the – had a great team leader there too and a great squad leader, but all still my friends – but uh, we were, like, behind this wall, and he's like, you know, if you see anything, look. And I was like, what do I do, Sergeant? And he goes, ah, oh, stop calling me that. <laughs> that was my squad leader. And I was like, okay, what do I do, Madden? <laughs> and uh, I just remember being like, Madden? He's like, well, he's like, well, a whiz is okay. He's like, a whiz is over here. No, wait, a, a crack is over here, and a whiz is over here. If it whizzes, you, you got trouble. If it cracks, you're all right. And I was like, okay. And you're just, like, sitting there, and you're, like, looking all of a sudden, crack, crack, crack. Like, oh, where's it coming from? Crack, 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 whiz. And one hits, like, right behind my head in between me and my uh, my teammate. And I was just like, holy shit. <laughs> and he's yeah. like, he's like, Bell, Chicky Chop. And this other guy's like, are you still alive? And they're like, yes, yes. And he's like, well, shoot, damn it. <laughs> so, <laughs> like, uh, rounds are coming, and we just started engaging, and we um, took out a guy across the field, but it was it was crazy. Yeah. I have a photo that was taken right after. Like, me and him coming out, like, we're just laughing because, like, we had had no point of reference. But after that, it was just like, okay, crack is okay, whiz is bad. Yeah. Was it just the one guy trying to shoot at you? Or? Um, they were just trying to move. They were trying to figure out what we were doing. Yeah. And realistically, they were just waiting to see and just trying to keep our heads down. Yeah. Because, like, at that time of the year and that style of fighting, they're, everyone's playing the elements. The elements are the terrain and the heat. Yeah. And so, like, nobody's moving, not even them, yeah. you know, during the day. Yeah. Um, from from that point on, you were there for seven months? Seven months, yeah. So uh, our tours were seven months, and at that time, the Marines in particular, there was no infrastructure, there was no bases, there was nothing. So we would just find a compound and be like, okay, we'll stay here and knock a hole in the side of it. And were you eating two or three MREs a day or what? <sighs> maybe one. Maybe one. I mean one, but, like, you know, it, you're in such a caloric deficit. It's just it's just really, really hard. Yeah. You're just constantly pushing, trying to like just hit the goals and like eating as much as you can, but you don't have enough stuff and yeah. patrolling, you know, sometimes twice a day, at least once every, no, um, yeah, yeah, twice a day sometimes. How much weight did you lose on deployment, do you know? Um, a good bit. Um, I went in, someone in the Marines at like 105. No shit. I know, hard to believe with my stature. Um, so <laughs> as put, big as you are. Yeah, uh, thank you, sir. You heard that here. He said I was big. Um, but they put me on double earthy. rations oh, really? in boot camp, which was horrible. Yeah. And, but like halfway through boot camp, like a part of my stomach just like erupted and oh, opened wow. up. And I went from 105 to like 135. Jesus. Yeah. And then, so like pre deployment, I was like around 140 or something. Yeah. And I was like back down to like 120, 130 maybe. Yeah. And just emaciated. Yeah. Right. Cause we, we were just like living like Bedouins, basically. Yeah. Wow. Um, so the whole time you were there, were there any operations that stood out as being, uh, like super memorable or either from an offensive standpoint or from a defensive getting your ass kicked standpoint, were there any like big ticket gun battles or operations that stand out? There was a legend that a bunch of Navy SEALs came in and blew up a bunch of HVTs that right? one night and that we watched them yeah. doing it. And, uh. I remember watching on optics. It was just bird comes in, guys jump out, and all you hear is bah, 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 you know, you know, and yeah. stuff like that. I don't know who it was, but I just remember we went in, swept up after him. Yeah, and uh, there was just like body parts left, and I was like, whoever it was, they did pretty good, and like we just jetted. <laughs> but um, I mean, nothing really in particular. I mean, at that part in that time of the war, it was really just the transition. It was the beginning of the transition from Iraq to Afghanistan. Yeah, and nobody really knew what was going on. Like we basically just didn't have the infrastructure to move forward in the war, in my opinion. Yeah. Like just the logistics, like they would have to just come bring water to us and just drop it in places. Yeah. yeah. We'd have to go get it. Like you would, it was just a mission to get water. Yeah. So that would you say to characterize your first deployment from a operational standpoint, was it pretty low key? It was pretty low key. I mean, it, it was dangerous for sure. I mean, but like they didn't even know where we were. Like, yeah. 
and this is uh, Garms or Afghanistan at that time was so remote. Like I remember we hit a field one time and there was just the skeletons of Russian tanks that were left there. Oh wow. Like a battalion of tanks. Cause when Russia left, they just left. Yeah. And somehow they had, you know, plasma torched and cut them down to the bare bones. And yeah. you would see like weird, like walk and you'd see a door be like, was that a, like a sickle and hammer on that door? What is that? Man, that's like, wild. Like the Russian, they're like, no bro, they're just using whatever they can find. Yeah. So it was stuff like that. It was, yeah. um, it was like a weird camping trip, honestly. Yeah. Did you guys ever get like legit attacked where you lost mm-hmm. anybody? Um, yeah, we we uh, we did we did lose some people. Um, you know, we we did push on um, an objective and uh, we lost a guy there. We couldn't see some um, machine gun positions that were actually like hidden behind each other, and that was that was horrible. He was a guy. He was a part of a sniper team that was actually with our uh, position at that time, and I saw him like every day. Actually, yeah, it sucked. What uh, what happened? Um, they were just moving to contact, right, and uh, bounding, you know, doing all the right things, and they came over the hill, and they couldn't see a legit machine gun position that was, like, hidden in a dirt mound uh, over, like, just had visibility, but you couldn't see it, had cover and concealment all around, and they came over this hill, and, you know, that was it. Did uh, you guys as a unit respond and, and get paid? We responded back? accordingly. Yeah. Yeah, very Talk much so. Them. I mean, at that time, when you called in air, air came in quick. We had direct assets because we were a MEW, right? Yeah. As you know, a MEW is a base, yeah. a Marine Expeditionary Unit. So it was direct assets. I mean, we were making it rain 24-7, 365. Yeah. yeah. You know, already was coming in, air was coming in, all that stuff was happening. Yeah. So you cr- crushed the enemy pretty well. Then. Yes. Yeah. Yes, we did. And then, you know, that same deployment, um, we went to a wedding one night in Afghanistan. Really? Yeah. Uh, talk, tell, tell me about that. All right. Um Okay, so we were rotating out through New Delhi at the time, a British place. We were getting R&R for like 48 hours, which was basically we would just go there and trade them stuff for tobacco and their magazines. Um, and uh, a pair of shorts I still have. Really? Right? Yeah, British uh, Army shorts. That's cool. Yeah, I gave a guy a bunch of ma- uh, mag pouches, and he's like, you want some shorts, mate? And I was like, <laughs> yeah, bro. <laughs> I got yelled at all the time about them, but I didn't care, right? Um and uh, so I was walking point at that time, and it was a night patrol. I mean, we didn't have Navy SEAL optics. Like, you guys have, like, you know, holograms and, like, you know, all this stuff. We we had, uh, like, uh, telescopes, basically, that were yeah. – I would say they were just – they weren't real na- MVGs. They were just uh, lenses that were painted green, you know, <laughs> <laughs> because uh, it was just PBS-14, so you even yeah. have you know, near or far um, perspective. Yeah. And um, – you know, we're like walking around, you know, you know, at nights you see the optics, you're like, what is that? You know, light from a fire looks like crazy stuff. Yeah. And all you can hear is, you know, and they're like, mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, and they had, they had been walking around like kids were throwing uh, um, grenades and stuff in patrols. So we heard all sorts of stuff and you just hear like, and there's a lot of people and you hear voices and you hear voices. And I'm like, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. And I get up on the door and my squad leader gets on me and, you know, puts his hand on me and he squeezes really tight, squeezes really tight release he does and I kick it in we I go right and I remember turning right and like as I go right just because the way the door was right it was short it was short on the left high on the right so I went right he went left and as soon as I did I was like I was just like is that a woman <laughs> like it's just like is that a woman and there was just a bunch of women and children and family members it was a wedding yeah and so we had came in there and we're like searching around and he like looks around and he goes uh okay, I guess we're good. And like, right as we were starting to leave, they start to lay out a rug and they lay out a rug and they put a little pot of meat and they put a little pot of uh, rice and they put some water and he goes, well, post security and he post security. <laughs> and we, uh, we ate in that wedding and, um, Oh shit. Yeah. I had some of the best rice, best, um, that's food prob- ever. I mean, that's probably the first time you had like real food in a real long food. time, right? Real food. Yeah. Cut to four hours later, we're all on post and everybody's like, Oh look, y'all went to, you went to a, fucking Benny Hunt. Yeah, you went to went to a wedding. You guys think you're so cool, and then you could hear it. People started to get sick from it. Oh like, no shit! It was like post COG is post and like oh really? Just, yeah, so we uh, actually all had to uh, get a shot. What is it? Finnegan? Is that what it was? Yeah. The nausea thing? Yeah. Whatever it was, we all went down for like 24 hours after that because we all got so violently ill. Wow. So basically, we went to a wedding, got hungover, and then got the best sleep I ever had in Afghanistan. Yeah. I mean, was it, what was the, uh, was it from the alcohol or was it something in the food? I don't think there was alcohol there. Um, 
Yeah, I think it was just the food. Yeah. Honestly, like just I mean, Being but so it, different. Yeah, I, I don't know. I mean, it didn't. I mean, it definitely wasn't like raw or anything. It was delicious, but like you, we had been ex, your gut biome had been yeah. exposed to that stuff. Well, they, they ate it too, right? They were eating it too. Yeah, yeah I mean, because it wasn't like here have this. And yeah, then no, no. Not eating it. They they made us a plate, but the yeah. guy the. I, th- I believe it was a village elder. He like looked at us and he grabbed he grabbed the rice. It's really weird. It's not weird. It's unusual that like I was there dressed like an idiot yeah. <laughs> with a gun in Afghanistan, and he looks at me and he goes, "Huh, huh?" Picks up the rice, picks up the meat, and he dropped it in his mouth. He's like, "That's how you do it." He's like, "There you go." Yeah. I was like, "Okay," <laughs> and so like that's what we did. That's wild. That's yeah. that's a cool fucking story, man. Yeah. What did you get them for their wedding? Um, did you give them anything? We let them have the wedding. Yeah. <laughs> <you know? laughs> Because have, I mean, have an M4. Yeah. Um, yeah. And so that led into like everything else. So like the yeah. first tour, like war felt great. Yeah. And then my second tour, they told us we were going to Iraq, the green zone, 2009, 2010. So I went home, told my wife and we wanted to have another child. So we did. We thought that was going to be the case until November of 2009. President um, Obama goes to West Point and he announces a troop surge in Afghanistan. But they told us like a few hours beforehand, like, you are going to Afghanistan. Yeah. So all of my friends are convinced every time my wife gets pregnant, they have to go to Afghanistan. <laughs> yeah. So, some strange correlation. Yeah. And then so, we went to Marja, which was not like that yeah, at so, all. No. So, uh, so tell us about, uh, about that deployment. That was uh, a lot hairier, I assume. Yeah. Marja yeah. was hell on earth. Yeah. What, uh, like, how, how did it start? I mean, it's it started out, like, I don't know. It's hard, it's hard to describe when I, I've, I've looked on it. There's documentaries. There's so many things that have talked about it. But, like, when I think about it the most, like, all I can think about is just, like, it doesn't feel like it happened. Um, how so? Or, or Why? It didn't feel real. I know, I, but like, did that place exist? It exists here, and like with all the stuff we have, but that's the way it exists over there. I, I um, like, uh, they told us we we're going to push. Marge at that time was is a, basically a bunch of like agricultural hamlets, like little villages, like make a town. But uh, all of the, like the majority of uh, opium comes from there. Mm-hmm. Big trade all over the place, like just a bunch of grow um, grows and all sorts of stuff around there. And, um, you know, we did, like, a probing operation first. And uh, I was just a first team leader at the time, and all the squad leaders went away, and uh, all the lieutenants went away, and I got made platoon commander for a day at this patrol base. We're doing a left and right seat, and we're doing probing operations of the security sector, so the outer cordon of Marja as a whole. And I see them all get on the seven-ton. I see them stop, and this sergeant major who was there gets out, gone doing his rip and that was how the deployment started like he got shot or what no he 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 hit an ied he blew oh, wow. up during his rip being like this is this is our sop for ieds yeah and that was it that vehicle got disabled and then another vehicle hit another id and they were all over there and then our little patrol base started getting attacked and i was a platoon commander by designation and i uh, had a bunch of ana who were just wilding out they were insane. They uh, kept trying to sneak off and smoke weed, not in that order. And uh, they love smoking weed out of an M16. That was, like, their mm. favorite thing. Yeah, yeah. They put it in the chamber and then, like, light it up. And it's the craziest thing I've ever seen in my life. That's so weird. Yeah. I mean, they're a, they're a different bunch. Mm. And um, that was just – that was the first time, and it was like that for weeks. And we were just – and then we would go out. And, uh, like, every day we would get not like con, not, like, contact patrols but combat patrols. Like, in particular, it was so violent that my wife was pregnant at the time, and we were finishing up this part of the probing mission, and I hadn't heard from her in a while and hadn't got a Red Cross message or anything. And so we had these French reporters with us, and uh, they were talking to us, and they were like, oh, you know, what do you think of Afghanistan? And, you know, it's okay. I think I can do a French accent without people getting, like, mega offended. Who cares? Who cares? This is my story. It's what yeah. happened, yeah. all right? And... um like, yeah, it's cool. You know, I don't, you don't really talk to them. You know how it is. You don't really, yeah, whatever, dude. Like, come on. And you have yeah. a job. They're just there. They're like on a car that you're driving. That's what I always tell people. Yeah. Like, and um, so we're like uh, driving around and all of a sudden, rounds start coming in. Boom, take contact. Hit the floor, go. And then I'm like, hey, man, we got to go. Him and his, his friend. He's like, no, 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 we are not going. I was like, hey, dude, you got to go. And he's like, no, no, I'm scared. And I was like, well, if you stay here, 
they're either going to kill you or they're going to capture you, and it's, it's just not going to be good for you. Yeah. And he's like, no, no, no. And I was like, hey, get the fuck up. And I grabbed him by the back of his flak, drug him <clears> back, <throat> get back to the patrol base. And uh, he's like, oh, Miss Sue, thank you so much. You saved my life. And I go, oh, I really appreciate that. Hey, let me borrow your cell phone. And he goes, oh, cell phone? You know, I don't have a cell phone. You know, no cell phone for me. <laughs> and I was like, you don't like, have a cell phone? Motherfucker, yeah, you do. I was like, he's like, no, no, no. And I was like, so your your uh, editor, he sent you out here to Afghanistan. You're doing this stuff for the AP, and you don't have a cell phone? He goes, oh, no, I don't. I go, okay. Well, that's unusual. All right, so here's the deal. You're either going to give me your cell phone, <laughs> or I'm going to take your ass back out there, and I'm going to leave you, and not one person's going to stop me, and you'll never make it. And I swear to God, I'll do it right now. He like looked at me, and he waited a second, and he looked outside, and he opened up his flak, and he handed me a cell phone. And I'll never, this is the best part. He looks at me and goes, uh, America's country code is uh, zero 01. <laughs> I took it from him. I go, you're goddamn right it is. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I picked it up, and I dialed I dialed the number, and like my squad leader was coming, and everyone knew what I was doing because they were doing I was trying to get home to yeah. learn about my wife, to learn about my daughter being born or not, or all the different. I didn't know what was happening. I just wanted to know. Yeah. We were past her due date. I called her and I was like, hey, I can't talk longer. Are you okay? Is she okay? How, how does she look? How do you feel? And, like, we talked. And it felt like a long time. I just remember I just, like, started to cry. And I was just like, I love you so much. I promise I'll call you soon. I hung up. And then uh, we found out, actually, um, there had been some other stuff that happened in the AO. And it was a miracle I got that call out. But wow. I wasn't able to call for a long time. And then every day after that until I came home was just horrible. The uh, operational tempo, was it every day? Every day. Were you guys going out every day? Every or? single day. Yeah. Every single day. We were spread thin. We didn't have enough people. You know, they had um, units to the north that were kind of all over the place. I mean, they were talking about people that have, by this time, they've been watching us for, you know, a few years. They really kind of learned our operational needs and, like, our bandwidth, right? Yeah. You know, people like y'all would come in and do, like, hard hits in and out and stuff. And then, like, we would, like, interdict and, like, try and do things like that to also, like, you know, fill in the dead spots of the battle space and, like, control it. But it was just too much. Yeah. And, um... You know, we were also trying to stop the you know, poppy from being made and harvested, and there's direct correlation between that and, like, when the poppy was harvested and when they would have cash and when the IDs and everything would get worse. Yeah. Our patrol bases were attacked. I mean, we lost people. It was just, you know, it was it was horrible. Are there uh, any of those operations or um, days that you went out or were attacked that stand out as being particularly memorable? The day we lost one of the Marines in my platoon. Can you uh, tell us that story? Yeah, I don't want to name him. Um, <clears throat> but uh, we were going to get an HVT. Um, Muhammad, Muhammad, whatever, none of it matters. He was uh, he was a big guy, and most people don't know this, but in Afghanistan, you actually buy your way out of jail pretty easily. The government's so corrupt, it's just like 10000 bucks or whatever of their dollars, which is like half of ours. And um, this guy had gone out a lot, and we were trying to put him away, right? He was just causing trouble all the time. And we had set in a cordon and stuff south. My my squad had, and the other squad was, I think, up to the west, and then the first squad had gone out and bagged him, right? They had gone out and got him. And uh, they were coming back. We'd done everything right. There had been a storm the day before, so we had to push the operation. Couldn't get birds in the air because the dust storms were so bad out there that it would literally choke choke the exhaust and they couldn't get off the ground. And uh, I remember I had my pants off because we were in QRF, right? So you just take them off on the rack and I just laid down like that. And uh, the ground it was, the ground shook and I, I put my hand up and I called my rifle and I was just like, oh, no fucking way. And uh, 50 meters right out in front of our position. They put an IED directional. And, uh, uh, you know, people were injured. And uh, we lost a Marine that day. And uh, immediately after that, not to not to go, I, I it's, it's just, it's it's very hard to talk about. And it's, it's not entirely my story to tell. I mean, I was there, everything else. But, like, um, I don't want to seem like I'm trying to, like, truncate the story, but like, it was just like, we were trying to treat him and get him out of the LZ and hold security. And then it happened so quickly. And then you find out when he's on the bird, he's not making it. And then you're still there. And we had three months left. Yeah. And so they immediately like reorganized the platoon and it came up to like, well, who knew who's going to be the squad leader of first squad now. And, uh, I talked to the first sergeant, I talked to the company CEO and I was like, I'll do it. I was like, pick me. I was like, I did it during the workup. I was like, nobody else will do it. They won't listen to anyone else but me. They'll at least respect me. 
And I was like, I'll either, they'll either do what I want or I'll die trying. Like, I don't care. And uh, they came out later and they're like, yeah, you're your first squad squad leader. And that uh, was that until we left. Now, how did that change your day to day? Um, I've never really talked about it publicly. Um, well, do you want to start? Yeah, no. Oh. It's um, when you're a first team leader, you're second in command of an infantry rifle squad. You have three guys that are directly underneath you, and you have the other uh, teams as well. But like, you're basically you're an advisor, right? You tell the squad leader, "Here's what I think," stuff like that. And uh, it went from that to being like people would give me information, and then I would have to make the decision. And uh, the real reality and the burden of leadership started to sit in a little bit more. Um, to know that I would make mistakes, even if I was right, things things would. There's still too many different things that are happening, and like it's my job. It's my job to like do whatever it takes to bring them home. Yeah. And doesn't mean you'll be successful at it. Um, there's so many factors involved, but it was just. I don't know. I'm eternally grateful for the opportunity to be able to lead troops in combat. Obviously, I wish we could have came about a different circumstance. Any other circumstance would have been better, but like I viewed it then and I viewed it now as the only way I could think to honor the service of the Marine we lost. Yeah. It's like, I, I will do this yeah, and I will scorch this fucking earth. And we did. We did. Would you say that you guys went out and, uh, and nope. really took it to them? No more talking. Yeah. No more talking. No. What? Hey, man, where are you from? Oh, I'm not from here, dude. Really? Why is there blood in this room? Oh, that's my dog's blood. Hey, come here. Let's talk about it. And we, <laughs> we would talk about it. It's just a bunch of that, right? Yeah. No more. The gloves came off. I mean, it, I mean, the battle, the battle uh, space shifted like dynamically, you know. And in Afghanistan, everyone has sandals or they're barefoot, right? And so you see a guy with some old '80s high tops, a bunch of mascara, like he's a, like he's you know a clown, and his hands are soft, like like a newborn child, like that dude is not there to farm. He's there for harm. And like, that's it. That's a, that's a wrap. Not all things are weapons. You know, um, a weapon's a cell phone. There's a guy's looking at me, pointing at me on a cell phone and rounds are coming out of a bush over there. I'll shoot at the bush and I'll move over to him. Right. Mm -hmm. You know, it doesn't have to be an AK 47, right? It's no different than anything else we did. Yeah. Just had to be smarter and understand the battle space. Yeah. And the second we pushed back, I mean, it was dangerous the whole time, but we started pushing back. I mean, the responses were, um, received. Yeah. What was the, um, I, I guess the, the overall goal for you guys at that point? I mean, I know you said you, you at the end of the deployment. Yeah. I just didn't want anybody to die because of what I did. Yeah. Was, that was did it. you accomplish that? Yeah, I did. Yeah. Um, you know, Marine got injured. Uh, you know, he, uh, Took, he took around the head, and uh, that that's that's something I've always I've always thought about. Um, nobody did anything wrong. He didn't do anything wrong. Um, we were ordered to do a specific thing. Uh, we were at a patrol base. We were very far extended. They told me to put a team in a vehicle, and they put the vehicle out there. And I didn't like how far away it was. Like in particular, it's not far. It's a thousand meters, but I mean that's miles in the battle space and. I didn't like it. And I'd already gotten warned several times that like they would take, they would even like take the squad away from me, which was nothing for my ego. It was just like, I didn't want, I didn't want, I didn't want to lose them or lose their safety to someone else. Yeah. Cause then ultimately that's still on me. What happens? Were, was there, is there a, uh, he's fine now. He walks and everything. He's oh, great. Sure. But the bullet hit his head and, oh, he was talking to me. It was crazy. Yeah. It just splintered. Hit his MVG plate, so it splintered. But nobody did anything wrong. I just think about it a lot. Yeah. Is there a uh, like a textbook operation that you guys went on that you could kind of go through step by step? Mm. I mean, not really. That just wasn't what we were doing in so much at that time. And we did we did a few like cordons and stuff for, for HVTs and things like. Is there one that that was uh, that you would characterize as um, one of, if not the most fulfilling missions that you went on? Um, like you were the the most. There was I there was there was one there was one I was out on a patrol with my lieutenant and um, there was a car Toyota Corolla right they're all Toyotas right and uh, we're like stop 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 and. This uh, this guy came out, and he was like, "Hey, 
is, 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 we're like, stop, the vehicle stops. They saw us on the road. And this guy, this, uh, we could see this, this elder gentleman with like something in his arms like this. And we didn't know what it was. And he wouldn't stop moving. He wouldn't stop moving. He wouldn't stop moving. And finally we got up to him. We're like, hey, stop. We're going to shoot you. Like fidgeting or walking away? He just had a bundle of something in his arms, you know? And uh, it was in the middle of the road. They saw us there. They weren't stopping. And we got the interpreter out there. And we came to find out that, like, um, the child had died during the night and birth. And they were just trying to bury him according to custom because they have 24 hours to bury him, I believe, according to their faith. And uh, he was, he just wanted to honor his child. And so we, we made we made it possible for them to pass securely and then get to the mosque and everything, do what they had to do to do that. But, um, yeah, that was like, I didn't think there were many good people in Afghanistan until that point, yeah. people that, like, cared as much. But that was something. So that kind of changed your idea of, of what the people or the populace was like? Yeah, yeah. There was that, and then, like, by that time, the, the ANA, I mean, everyone had trouble with them afterwards, but we got really lucky. Um, um, they had bonded with us. They had helped us do a lot of stuff. They even pushed one of my Marines off of an IED once, hmm. right, that they all knew and they all saw, and what they do is they just don't step on it, right? They knew it was there, Yeah. and he pushed he pushed the guy off. He pushed the Marine off of it, and he's like, he's about to get it. Wow. And he just didn't think, and... uh that was that had happened. Um, you know, we had, you know, deliver water to families and stuff, but like overall, Marja in particular was just like I won't say it broke my spirit, but like it didn't make me think it was ever gonna get better. Yeah. It didn't. Yeah. So how how has the uh the withdrawal a year, a little over a year ago now, how how did that impact you? <laughs> I haven't fully uh realized that yet, but it it's definitely uh unearthed some old feelings, right? Um, I don't know. It's it's it was hard to see. I mean, it was personally. I would have never left Afghanistan. I would have turned it into the new Germany or Japan, two superpowers in the world, economic powerhouses. They're doing very well. They were also doing very bad prior to World War II. Um, you know, we maintained a presence there, which was able to help make sure that their con their country was strong and thriving in the place they are now. Um, but. Like, it just never made sense. I think the biggest thing is it just felt like a political, like, hey, we did it. Right? Now there's documentaries and stuff coming out. You're seeing it. And you would see the people, like, grabbing onto the C-130s as they're taking off and stuff. And, like, my only real hope now is that people will at least try and remember that. Like, right now a big a big thing is, you know, the way women are treated in Iran. They've always been treated that way. They've always been treated that way in Iran, in Afghanistan, countries like that. And we I don't think we should forget that, right? That that's the reality of most people in that part of the world. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, we, we made a commitment and we need to follow through with it. I, I don't, I don't know. It's, it's just hard. It's really hard. Yeah. I'm different you know, from the war. You're different from the war. Everyone's different. Generations are different. Our families are different. And, like, we just left. You know, it stinks of like Vietnam vibes too. Like yeah. it's, it's really hard. You know, and that's when one of the things that have really made me commit to doing things to get better. Yeah. Um, as you were wrapping up that that Marja deployment, that was 2011. You said. Mm -hmm. Um, looking back on it, was there, was there a a successful operation that stood out as being, uh, the most um, life changing or um, impactful for for what you guys accomplished. I mean, we did we we did get a lot of we did get a lot of dudes. I mean, our our main job there was to destroy Poppy or buy it back and the opium. And we did we we got a lot of HVTs. I remember one um, one dude. Uh, the only way we could, we could identify him uh, was uh, <laughs> he uh, he would dress like like women and like sneak off. And so like they're like look for. This is my only tactical claim to fame. They're like, look for a guy with a, a bullet hole in his left butt cheek. And so they're like, how do we fix it? And I was like, give every Marine a pair of gloves and do it. You know, have them <laughs> lift up and be like, hey, let me see, let me see yeah. your cheeks. Yeah. And that went all the way up to the highest level. And that was like an SOP that was developed. So it's my, you know, my general patent moment. But, yeah. um, I mean, uh, 
I mean, for us, it was just the day in day out of just connecting with those people in the village, you know, um, seeing, seeing the way they would act. I mean, we didn't do like big operations like that. Not at that time, at least. Yeah. We were just trying to just stop them. We were just trying to introduce chaos and stability at the same time. And it doesn't make sense. Was it? it was the clear yeah. hold build yeah. phase of the war. They're like, just clean them out and then hold it and then build it back up. Yeah. That's how democracy works. Yeah. And, uh, they didn't take to it. Yeah. Is the long and short of it because yeah. we went in there, destroyed the way they all make a living, and they didn't like that. Yeah. Did uh, is there um, for, I guess from your guys' perspective, was there a biggest force that you faced, numbers wise? Like, were there any operations where it was like dozens of guys you were actively fighting, or, or more? When they attacked our patrol base, like yeah. vehicles pulled up, they we were getting shot at all around. It was not long after we lost that marine. What happened that day? Cars just started showing up. And what they really showed us was that they understood our weaknesses. And our weaknesses was our patrol base was the farthest uh, eastern limit of advance. It was us and then nothing, just the road that led into town. And, like, you know, you're looking there, and all of a sudden, and you start looking, and you're like, oh, my God, what is that? And then, oh, why is there a Toyota Corolla driving through this field? Why are people getting out of it? Why are they shooting at us? And so then you start doing those things, and then, you know, rockets started hitting the building, everything. It went on for hours. It went on to a point to where we started conserving ammo, and we had to wait oh, wow. for our mobile section to come up. But they were on the other side of town, and they couldn't get there fast enough. Did, I, did any of them ever break through? No, but it got scary. Yeah. It legitimately got scary because it was just us, right? How, how many is us? It was just a platoon of, uh, you know, 30 Marines and about, you know, 30 A and A, maybe. They don't, they don't really count. They weren't doing anything. They were all in their room, yeah. you know? And so when you're having to go around, but how many rounds you got, you're having to conserve and make those type of decisions. Those are things you're like looking for, like, where do we put up an emergency LZ if we have two Kazavaks? We can't. There's nowhere to land. We're not secure right now. Yeah. Um, how that lasted all fucking day? Or all what? day, actually, yeah. like right until sundown. How, how did it end? It ended when they left because our mobile section showed up. Um, our company gunnery sergeant at the time uh, had um, a logistics train that he had turned into a mobile section, basically, like a mobile weapons section. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, did they actually engage them, or they just saw them and they they, they just showed up, and then they, you know, the Mark 19s and the big heavy guns on top of the MRAPs just started laying down some hate, and by that point, they're like, yeah, it's just not going to work. Yeah. That was what stopped. But then my squad went out afterwards and went through the buildings and then cleaned up. Yeah. Yeah. What did that consist of numbers-wise, do you recall? Of enemy? Yeah. Just anyone we came across. I mean, you know about how many there were? Altogether, like double digits. Really? Yep. They were still there, injured, not injured. I mean, like, there was just enemy everywhere. Yeah. You guys walked through and fucking... House to house. Wreck shop. Way city, yeah. 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 Um, <clears throat> did you ever take any uh, any hits or any super... I was behind there? a wall on my first tour when an RPG hit it, and yeah. it also hit a pile of manure, so it literally liquefied it, and it rained down shit on me. <laughs> that was pretty cool. Huh? That was pretty... Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Fiery um, shit storm. Yeah, I mean, like... Yeah, that was that was pretty bad. My corpsman at the time just looked at me. I remember I had a, a tripod on my weapon. I put it over the wall. Yeah. <clears throat> and uh, he's 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 like Bell, Bell, and he's like shaking me, and he's he's like wake up, motherfucker, and he slaps me. Yeah. And uh, he's like, listen, if you go to sleep, you will die. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, okay. Uh, and I was just like shooting. I was like, okay. Yeah. But um, yeah. Yeah, it was, it was a good time. Yeah. Did you guys ever have any dogs with you? We had a dog on my second tour, um, Canvas, Labrador, black. She was incredible. Yeah. Um, trained by uh, Matthew Albano. What's up, Bano? <laughs> I want to send it to him. That yeah. dog saved my life a few times. Well, tell me about it, shit. Well, you know, dogs. Yeah. Um, no, I don't know shit No, so at this time, we, they were testing it out. They weren't really sure. I mean... Yeah. You guys probably had hoverboards and jet skis by this time yeah. and lasers. They're like time machines. Yeah. yeah. Dude, I have so many questions. Um, but uh, this had trickled down to us and, we, you know, it was um, canvas, black lab. We're using it to smell, uh, in particular, anal, the ammonium nitrate, aluminum flakes. And uh, four or five bombs, I think she found before she started to get the shakes. And then um, they ended up actually rotating them out. Yeah. Um, but she was incredible. Right, she'd hunt it up really good and lay on top of it, 
And uh, it was just really hard to see the, you know, once they get the treat, as you know, the response and see her like sad because she's like, oh no, now now it's going to be loud. And, so it started know. to fuck with her uh, yeah, yeah. sensory wise. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But she, so she found, you said four or five. I believe so, yeah. yeah. And there were ones that for sure, if she hadn't been there, would have. Would have taken. Yeah, we've we've been done. Yeah, that's pretty awesome. Yeah. Yeah. How long was she there for? Um, he was there the whole tour, but like they, he like went back to like the big base for a while, and they put another dog handler out. Um, but uh, I mean, the whole seven months or so, he tried to even get her. I don't know where she wound up, but he tried to get her after she got retired. Yeah. Wow. It's amazing, amazing shit, no doubt. Uh, were you, did you guys mess with her at all? Like back, back at the base, getting to play with her, or were they really stringent about not interacting with her? Um, a little bit. She was kind of a therapy dog in a little bit. Like I have photos of like me and her and she would like hop in my bed Yeah, and my kids would like send her cookies and stuff. And, uh, yeah. But I mean, she was disciplined, but like, it wasn't like undisciplined. The other dogs weren't, but canvas was like the, the platoon dog. Like you still have pictures of her. Yeah. 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 I'm, I want to, I want your opinion on what type of dog to get my family, but yeah. Yeah. Uh, I'd love to incorporate into the YouTube version some of the picture pictures of any of the things that you. Oh yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll send cool. it. Yeah, it's yeah. it's basically me just smoking all around yeah. Afghanistan. Yeah. What did you smoke? The local shit, or um, did you bring shit in? Yeah, I mean, I brought stuff in. Like if uh, if you're sharing cigarettes, you get you get hundreds, right? Because yeah. they're long ones, and so it's me just ripping like Newports at the yeah. time. Uh, <laughs> Newport one hundreds, um, Pines were okay, you know, but like Newports and yeah. Dip, my wife. And I love her so much, and she's the best. She sent the best care packages, so much so that I, I would I would check around to see if Marines didn't get any. Yeah, and I'd be like, "Hey, can you throw one together for so and so?" And yeah, she, yeah never, that's awesome. she, she never even hesitated. Yeah. And oh, that's cool. Instead of like random stuff you don't use, she'd yeah. be like, "What do you want?" And I'd be like, "Dr Pepper, Red Bull, junk yeah. food, People magazine, yeah. and uh, uh, baby wipes and Q tips." Yeah, she never missed. Yeah, that's awesome. And tobacco, yeah, yeah. Um, so when you got back from that deployment, um, hard to integrate back into society or. Yeah. 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 I mean, um, I went back to work like two weeks later. I had some terminal leave and I started uh, college in January, 2011. I went to this, uh, university in Tennessee called MTSU at the time and, uh, went in there and there was this guy, this English professor showed up and he had a scarf and he was like very like dead poet society ish, you know? And uh, he was going through the syllabus, and at the end of it, he um, he was, like, uh, going through stuff, and um, I went, he's like, make sure all of your papers are in MLA format. I, like, wrote that down. And I was like, I don't know what MLA format means. And I went up there, and I was like, hey, sir, my name's Zachary Bell. I'm a new student here. He goes, oh, nice to meet you. And I go, what is MLA format? And he goes, son. Six months, he's like, a few months ago, you were in high school. You should know what MLA format is. Please don't bother me with questions like that again. It was very, very dismissive of me. And I was like, actually, six months ago, I was in Afghanistan. If you ever talk to me like that again, we're having some real problems. I was like, do you understand me, sir? He goes, <clears throat> yes, and thank you for your service. MLA format is. <laughs> <laughs> um, I had just left. It was like the first yeah. person I talked to. I, I, I kind of regret a little bit of the interaction, but like, I'll never forget the way he looked at me with like disdain that he had looked at freshman with for years yeah and i understand i hope i still look as young as i definitely did then but like it was just weird to be so oddly dismissed for lack of knowledge and um i i was just you know working and going to school until 2016 and to be honest i really didn't start working on myself till late 2016 yeah i didn't have time i did have time i had other things i had to do yeah um your decision to get out uh, was it based off my of family. just having kids? Yeah, my family. 100%. Would you have stayed on, stayed in? If, Without a doubt. Yeah, I was looking into the MESEP program, the Green to Gold program, because I, I didn't know anything about like officer stuff or any yeah. of that jazz. I wanted to have like a long career. I wanted to stay in the infantry or combat arms. And I was, you know, I I talked to like Marsoc, MSOB, all those people. Like, you can, there's all these like things you could do to stay operational. Like as you know, you're like because yeah. eventually you just end up counting stuff. That's yeah. that's the military end up counting people or bullets or whatever. But I was just, I wanted to, you know, maybe I'll go here so I can kick in doors some more, maybe go there. But like the toll it took on my family is just too much. Yeah. Did your wife want you to get out or was she supportive either way? She's supportive either way. Yeah. I, I don't think she would have left me or anything like that. And, uh, 
but there's there's just no version of me being able to be there for my children if I stay in. Yeah. No, I hear you. I'm just gone all the time. And being in the military is the most selfish slash selfless thing you'll ever do. It is a weird dichotomy that way for sure. Yeah. Um, You're committing yourself to the service of others, to the greatest of good that you can think of. But it's costing you damn near everything. Yeah. No, that's an interesting uh, point for sure. Um, as you progressed uh you know year after year of being out at what point did the did the sign thing kind of come to play and where did it start slash come from um so it was 2020 and i was bored and i was on the internet i'd seen like a whole bunch of different versions of it there's tons of like people doing things like internet culture goes up and down and there was this guy like you know dude with a sign and all this stuff and like you know i've, I've written before uh, for various outlets and publications, you know, um, Huffington Post, the local paper, and uh, even the New York Times once or twice. And I always liked writing. I'd always liked the cathartic outlet of it. Uh, but it was just like, I don't I don't know. I just wanted to try something different, right? And uh, I saw, like, this guy writing stuff on cardboard, and I was like, that's interesting. Like, what if I could just, like, make fun of, like, military culture a little bit? Yeah. Like, take the piss out of us a little bit. So try and get back to that place of, like, healing and being honest about when we need help. You know, because everyone's like, you know, oh, I don't need help. I'm fine. But we all do. We all need help. We all need to, like, check in and understand what's going on in our lives. And uh, I just started putting them up. And there was way, there was a lot of focus on my outfit. Uh, a lot of focus on my outfit. Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because it's the skivvy shirt from the Marines. It's just a green shirt, but it's it was it's my gym outfit, if I'm being honest. Silky's in a fucking green shirt. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> well, I had a bunch of them when I got out, right? Yeah. I had a ton of them. Yeah. And so I was like, I'll just wear this, right? I'm not going to think too much about it. I feel like if I think too much about my gym outfit, then I'm already off to a bad start. Yeah, you're already there for the wrong reason. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 And, uh, you know, I want to be there for the weights, you know, not for the dates. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Yeah. Um, and uh, I... Uh, I just started wearing that and I was like, I'll just make like a character. Like it's me turned all the way up just like, cause it's not really me. It's like a version of me. Yeah. I hope it's not really me. Yeah. And, uh, I'll just say things that like have to be said. I don't want to be rude. I want to be hateful. I have like rules, right? The, yeah. the world I made had rules and it was like, this guy's dumb. <laughs> you, know? Yeah. you know, the internet, they're super kind. This guy's dumb. This guy doesn't know blah, blah, blah. He's just all the fuck has he done. Yeah. Yeah, he doesn't even know what a Navy SEAL is. You know, he he's not a squadron guy like me. Yeah. I'm on Beta Gamma Squadron and blah blah blah. You know, Jocko, blah blah blah. Yeah. They all. It's, I think it's just one guy talking to himself, and he's yeah. like listening to what he says, and he's yeah. like, "That guy's got bad ideas," but it's, yeah. it he doesn't know it's him, right? Yeah. And they're wearing like an you know like a a gi with like a discipline equals freedom, and they're hitting themselves in the head, yeah. and they're screaming, and they're you know it's just a whole thing. Yeah. And um. No wonder people don't like us. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but I was like, maybe I could make fun of that. And it was just like, this guy's the dumbest thing ever. And it all was about to stop. I, it's You don't do anything for likes or comments or follows because if you chase that, you'll never really win. Um, but they didn't get the intent. And so I was going to shut it down May 1st of 2020. And I put a sign up that said, you know, bring back Captain Crozier, you know, the naval captain who was like, Called up the president was like, "Hey, by the way, there's COVID on this ship. Yeah, we got to fix it." And he got relieved of his command, which is unheard of, as you know. It's a big deal. He basically lost. Con he was relieved of his command of a base, a naval vessel. Yeah. And um, I I had checked my phone like the day I posted it, and like it was just like, <laughs> like unlike anything ever. Like I just opened it up, I just remember it was just like vibrating, so I had to turn off notifications on it. I never seen anything like that before life and then that led uh into everything else and i've just been kind of trying to hold the reins on it you know keep it you know in out of the ditches ever since then it's just been trying to create a community that i feel is good and bring attention to like the issues that we have and like a positive way and not be negative is there a uh, kind of a mission statement that you have that that goes towards it i always say like be the change you want to see right um, and I mean that, like, we need to be the change we want to see in the world. Like, stop talking about the VA being bad or stop talking about blah, 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 whatever it is. Yeah. What are you doing to make it better in your individual way? It doesn't have to be, like, globally. Just start, like, with you individually. Yeah. 
your community, your people, your tribe, and then build it out from there. Yeah. Is there a, um, a schedule that you try to keep, like putting out? Some, some weeks are heavy with posts, some are not. I mean, I try to always take into account like certain things historically, like Veterans Day, the um, national holidays, Marine Corps birthday, stuff like that. Um, I try to be aware of like what's happening in the world, but not driven by it. I mean, because there's, as you know, uh, these things can definitely become like politicized one way or the other, and that's the last thing I want to do. Yeah. Because I don't want to alienate half my audience. I sure. want as many people as possible so we can try and get the help. Because I feel like if it doesn't hit a veteran, it'll hit someone that knows a veteran. Yeah. And so that's my goal. My yeah. goal is the growth of that. Yeah. And to saturate people and being like, hey, you should see this because maybe that person will send the thing that says, stay, you're worth fighting for to yeah. someone when they're in need. I mean, having done it now for a couple of years, have you ever gotten to the point, like almost from a writer's block standpoint of like, mm -hmm. fuck, I don't know what to. Yeah. Are there times where like you may go weeks without posting? Any... Uh-huh. Yeah. I have a bunch of them saved on my phone, about a hundred. Yeah. I will eventually shut it all down. I'm not there yet. Um, I have a bunch saved on my phone. I do it in batches. Uh I don't know. As long as I still continue to feel like things are going in like a positive direction, I'll continue to do it. But like, so is, is it the instant that you feel like they're not, then you shut it down? Yeah. I don't want to go out on the bottom. I'll go out on the top yeah. and not like top. You know what I mean? Like, I yeah. don't, don't want to you know what Gallagher is, right? Yeah. He's still on tour. Wow. That's crazy. It's that's what I, that's what I see. Yeah. That's what I don't want to do. Yeah, you don't want to be like, wow, that guy's still holding a fucking sign. Yeah, I'm like, geez, man, he's got a, an all white Fu Manchu, and he's still holding. It's me a sign. being like, better. Yeah, in a wheelchair with it propped up. I was a Navy <coughs> SEAL, tried it, superstar. <laughs> Cobb well, Carpenter's my cousin. You yeah. know, just like still, whatever you have to do, right? Yeah. I don't want to be that. You don't want to be Lieutenant Dan. At no. the at the whorehouse. No, no. Yeah. I mean, I don't know, man. I've never been to Saigon. Who knows? Yeah. But. Yeah. I mean, it's, I wanted. Or I guess uh, Lieutenant Dan at the VFW on Christmas. You don't want to, you don't want to be that guy. Yeah. Um, and I feel like we're all susceptible to that. Yeah. I just want. Man, I just want to stop burying my friends. Have there been uh, a lot that you've lost to, to suicide since? Or after there? than I did to it. Yeah. Yeah, my summer, my whole year, but in, t in particular my summer is just pockmarked with anniversaries and deaths, and it's just, you know, it's it's hard. It's hard. Um, Are there any of them that um, that you felt like they reached out and you you missed it, or like that? Are, are there any that that really cut you that way? I mean, it's it's uh, not not that I'm aware of, yeah. um, but it does it does make you um, it does make you hyper focused on like like what the fuck what yeah what did I and then like I don't know but you only have the context of things afterwards right you're you know when something like that happens you go back and look at your interactions but you're only weighing them differently because of the result yeah and. Prior to that, you're using existing information of like, well, that's the way so and so always was. Yeah, you know, um, and I mean, each time it happens, each time it happens, I feel like there's a wall between not doing it and doing it to where like it lessens, mm -hmm. right? I was looking at this thing somebody sent me, and they said the suicide rate might as be as high as forty four a day. I was just like, holy shit. Like, the older I get, the older you get, the the higher risk we are at suicidal ideation, all these, you know, health conditions, all these things. And it's just like, man, I, I just, you know, I'd just like to have some grandkids, you yeah. know. I'd like to make it and that far, but sometimes it feels insurmountable, right? And so, like, that's what I think, like, Veteran with the Sun really is, is, like, the goal at the end of the day is to kind of take a little bit of piss out of us in the right way and be like, hey, I love you. Yeah. It's all right. I love you. Yeah. You're worth, you're stay, you're worth fighting for like for real. Yeah. Because that's, I mean, of all the things that like changes a family forever, there's, there's nothing I can think that's more impactful. Than that yeah. Yeah. In the worst ways. Uh, yeah, I agree a hundred percent. Um, 
is is there a goal with it other than what you're already doing? Like, is there a, a place you want to get it to, or is it just kind of I mean, keep doing what you're doing? It's continuing to grow. I've I've you know I've got some thoughts like doing a podcast, like maybe to like make it like a a thing where I could be like a longer form of like what the topics are, or things I'm trying to discuss. But like as of right now, like I I kind of use it as like a catalyst for fire starter to throw it out in the community yeah. and see what what comes of it. Yeah. You know, I, I think the podcast thing is a good uh, is a good idea. Oh. I mean, I, I think you should do it. I think you'll uh, come up to Nashville. I mean, I don't know what business I have being on it, but I'm, I'm like with each sign, right? Is that you could, you could take uh, <clears throat> whatever the theme of that sign is and have a guest on that kind of reflects that. You know, that's that's the idea I had initially with it was just like <clears throat> go into like more depth because like realistically, I can I can fit like fourteen words is the most I've ever done on like one piece yeah. of cardboard, but. Um, I have, I have like stupid knowledge about cardboard now, yeah. like, uh, have a is, specific brand. Is design. it all the same size? Yeah, 24 by 18. Yeah. Really? Double corrugated. Yeah. <laughs> From Amazon. It ships How's in that? packs of 25. Yeah. That they're already that they're pre-made. I used to cut them, but it's like easy. You know, like I got lazy, yeah. you know, yeah. <laughs> victory made me soft type thing. Yeah. That's wild. That's funny. Um, is there any signs that you're ashamed of? No. No, there's not. nothing there's nothing I'm ashamed of. Not yeah. one Navy SEAL joke I yeah. made. Are, are there any that you've taken down? No. Not no. that not that not that come the that I can think of. Yeah. Um is there any I've taken down? Is there any I'm ashamed of? No. Uh, any that have gotten you in trouble? Like with like where somebody calls and be like, Hey, what the fuck? or anything like that? Uh the Captain Crozier thing got a lot of attention. Um going to Ranger School doesn't make you a Ranger got a lot of attention. Yeah. Good attention from the sounds of it. Yeah. Um, I mean, that's just true, though. I mean. It's weird the things people will argue over. I mean, uh, what was it? Uh, wearing gaiters doesn't make you a Navy SEAL. Writing a book does. Yeah. That was a. There's a lot of. Well, that's why there's so many SEALs out there, I guess. But the, and the, that was SEALs fighting against each other. Yeah. And like, uh, dude, Sean Matson is. Um, sounds, he's a, he's a yeah, SEAL. Yeah. Um, but he had to like come to defend me underneath his trident and be like, I told Zach to make this joke. Like that was the thing. Yeah. Some guys like, how dare you? And I was like, bro, I'm just like, we're yeah. all, we're all friends here. Just and, a fucking joke. Yeah. I mean, I made fun of myself. Like how, yeah. you know, I was in the infantry. Just wait. I'll tell you. Yeah. Right. It's all things that like <laughs> yeah. I do too. Yeah. Um, but the, the thing with the, with the ranger school, uh, the, the one thing I think that's easy to justify that is that in any other service, right? Like there, there's been, you know, not a lot, but there's been some seals that have gone through ranger school. Like, Isn't like a thing you'll do. Y'all get the option for it when you go to your schools. No, I wouldn't say you get the option for it. There, there are instances where, where it becomes available, but it, um, I'm trying to think the last time I, I, I don't, I Did don't, you go? Th- no, I didn't. I don't think that there's been anybody that's gone through it in a while mm-hmm. from the, you know, if you want to call it like my, my generation of guys, there, there was a handful of guys that went through it, but it was usually like, uh, there were two officers from team three that went, mm-hmm. um, the, the biggest reason why they went is that it was like a logistical rotation thing yeah. is that they had this like six month period of where they, they basically were kind of like in, in between things and didn't have shit to do anyway. And so yeah. it's like, well, fuck, send them to ranger school. You know, it was one of those kind of yeah, things. Yeah. There's, there's only been a, f- a handful of guys that have gone through it. Like it's not like sniper school where a ton of fucking seals mm-hmm. go through it. You know, it's, it's fairly rare. So. Well, and it's, it's just a leadership course is how it's been. Yeah. But you know, to like a, a seal who has been through it would never consider themselves a ranger, you know? So. Well, and the army is the only branch that's really like that where they have like courses. Everyone yeah. Does I mean like it, it is nobody weird. goes to sergeant's course uh, yeah. in the Marines or a corporal's course or the things like yeah that's a very like army thing yeah um, and like in the, in the Navy they're not going to send you know anybody else in the Navy through yeah. buds but then not go to a SEAL team you yeah, know yeah. it's like why would you do that I don't know it's weird yeah no it's uh, people <clears throat> are very adamant about things like that yeah. um, and I don't know some of it's like a little fire starter type thing like I, I kind of like it but like i like it because i know they'll stick around for the next thing and the next thing is like hey go get some help or go yeah. work out or something yeah. right um i'm trying to think if there's anything i've taken down um the one that was mo- uh the one that i didn't anticipate the reception it would receive the most was uh one my wife had come up with she she said that we should talk about it it was about the withdrawal from afghanistan in particular and um 
it was, uh, you know, I can't remember the exact word. I don't remember it, but, you know, no one left behind means something different to me, Mr. President. And, like, I remember I posted it. It was 12 on, like, a Wednesday or Thursday, and I was, like, walking out of the house, and then I was, I like, pulled out my phone. I was just like, oh, my. The Secret Service pulls up. Uh, no. <laughs> no, they don't want to waste their time. Um, yeah. They're like, no, there's nothing there. Just an idiot with cardboard. Yeah. Um, but like, I, I was like, <clears throat> wow, this is, wow, this is a lot. And then it just started rolling. That one just started rolling. I didn't anticipate that. Yeah. And then it wound up on a bunch of different things. And then, you know, immediately after that, there was like, there was all the stuff that happened with those Marines and that soldier that died. It was just, an, it was insane. All yeah. the stuff that happened, all that. But I didn't anticipate that. I didn't anticipate that like something that I said would be like, taking that seriously yeah is that the the post or sign that's gotten the most traction or is there one that's been yeah. even more yeah that, that's the one yeah yeah well numbers wise is there a Millions. way to quantify it? yeah wow one of the trump <laughs> shared it it was on like news websites yeah mel gibson shared it on his telegram yeah that's wild yeah didn't so you, cast me for a movie yeah, though. so you basically know those people then <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> um it's funny because you say it because you you work on the internet, but like how real that is because people yeah. start to view it like a cafeteria. Yeah, it's like oh, they sit at your lunch table. Now. Yeah, no, yeah. well, it's yeah. I mean, I'm as just flabbergasted by it too. But like the reality of it is, is this was just something I did working at a healthcare company to make myself laugh. Yeah, and my me and my friends laugh, like me yeah. making dumb jokes, and to get to a point to where like I'm having like some version of commentary on like a global issue, is um, that made me like really that was a big shift and like, I need to be more deliberate and intentional in what I'm doing. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Does that make sense? No, for sure. It does. I mean, the Epstein thing is, is kind of similar that way. Like I, I'm kind of yours is way bigger than mine. You were well, not, you literally uh, said Epstein on Fox news. I think you and Alex Jones were the only people to say Epstein on Fox news at that point. Well, but I, you know, my, don't say I, Alex Jones edit that out. So this doesn't get demonetized. Yeah. <laughs> I guess my point is, is that similarly, like it was an off the cuff, just fucking with him joke. Just doing it, yeah. That I would have never. Did th you think they were going to play it? No, I didn't even think that. I, <laughs> I just assumed there's no way that they would air it. And it wasn't live. So it wasn't like. It was just a segment. Like you probably, would you shoot it here or somewhere? Uh, yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, in, in their studio in Dallas is where I was at. You know, Jesse was in New York or D.C. or wherever the fuck. But. But we recorded it a few days ahead of time, so yeah. like they left it in. It was there. a segment you were talking about your company, correct? Yeah, that was sort of. I mean, it was just it was the You're talking about dogs. Yeah, because it was right after the, um, it, it was a, a raid on ISIS where a dog uh, went in on the uh, Baghdadi guy. Okay. And as the dog was approaching him, he clacked himself off. Yeah. And so, <clears throat> like the media does, you know. Oh hey shit! There was a dog that induced this blah blah blah. Yeah. Let's bring dog yeah. people on and we'll. Somebody give me a dog guy. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean that's a hundred percent. You know, so there was a handful of interviews over a couple day period that I did. Yeah, yeah. You're you know, getting screened and, uh, and everything. That's 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 yeah. what's fascinating. Yeah. Somebody, I, in my mind, I want to say it was one of the Murdochs. Yeah. They're like, run it, mate. Yeah. You know, run the Epstein clip. Yeah. Well, I, I guarantee. Well, yeah. I mean, not so strangely enough, I've not been asked back since then. So you know. <laughs> figure that one out uh but anyway you know i guess my point is is that similarly um you know like i i had no no idea that that would have done what it did and and it certainly wasn't my intention either you know you're you know? you're accredited with like literally yeah, that on which is stupid because that's 100 percent not the case but, i don't know man uh, i've i did a little i did a little deep dive on it and until you until you like cross the threshold nobody was like Rrr. well I, I mean i'm Whatever. I love how you're looking at it. You're like, yeah, and, you know, it's, it's, yeah. Of like, it's not a finished trained dog. You shouldn't do it. And, you know, Epstein didn't kill himself, and you yeah. just you don't even blink, yeah. right? You yeah. went back to where you were in Hell Week for a second. <laughs> <laughs> you were, like, there. I was asleep. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Anyway, I mean, like I said, I, it just uh, it was a, a, a weird thing that kind of similarly I was like, well, you know, maybe I should be more careful about that. But ultimately I don't give a fuck, you know. Like it's just, uh, you know, not doing what you do. I do what I do with this show, and, and uh, if somebody has me on, I'm going to say what I think and, and whatever. And, and for me, it was just more about two things. One was fucking with him because uh, it seemed like he was kind of half ass in the interview. Like It seemed like he was taking it more like a joke and was, was kind of di being dismissive about yeah. the whole thing, like yeah, and he's, asking he, dumb he's questions. He's doing them all day. And like, yeah, he's just not going even, through the yeah, fucking motions, yeah, you know. Yeah. But 
But uh, but the other thing too was legitimately it was just like you know this guy's fucking crooked. You know he's part of uh, you know a, an enormous sex trafficking ring that needs way more attention uh, brought no, to it. So it had to be done. I just yeah. love that you did it. Yeah. Well. Right. Because like that's that's we're talking about like a lot of different things. Like the shit from like doing stuff on like your own personal scale to like yeah. where it becomes public, and then where jokes become like bigger things. Yeah. Right. But like you, the joke is what got you there to yeah. have a real serious conversation about. It, it is kind of weird that. You know, the most prolific, world-renowned, famous human trafficker ever died in yeah. one of the most secure prisons ever when there was no footage yeah. and he hung himself. When the cameras were broken and during the guard shift change. Cameras were broken, know, like, guard shift. It sounds like a bad Michael Bay movie. Yeah. I mean, right? it, yeah, it's fucking it, like it, you couldn't. I mean, to me, there's it, it's like it's either they're that fucking stupid or they think we're that stupid. You know, it's like, it's equally bad. Yeah. You know, um, but yeah, anyway. Um, well, so I, I guess, you know, uh, transitioning back into the, uh, to the science stuff. I mean, uh -huh. like I, I know you talked about the mission statement. Uh, where do you go from here with it? I mean, for, for me, I'm just going to try to continue to grow the community. Um, like I said about the podcast is the thing I've, I've thought about doing, um, I'm really trying to go out of my way to partner and advocate for resources that are good for healing, uh, be they traditional or non-traditional. Um, psychedelics is a big thing I'm highly interested in. Texas is decriminalizing at the rapid rate, from what I understand. Um, you know, I went through a treatment myself through vets, um, doing uh, ibogaine and DMT, which was a I couldn't even begin to explain it, but it was a it was a completely life changing experience, uh, yeah. and you know. Um, my main shift has been spending as much time as possible with my family. For so long, my goal has been provide for them as much as I can. So focus on getting as much as I can, like resources, mo money, money equals freedom, right? Like that's just it. Yeah. And so I was like, if I get as much money as I can, if I'm moving through my career as much as I can, I'll be able to give them the life that I want and provide for them best I can. It was just I was off, right? I should have been just focusing on spending as much time with them. And when I shifted to that, my my uh, career, my opportunities have, have just like quadrupled. Yeah. Um, and my time with them has like, everything's gotten better once I made that shift to like, how do I do this as yeah. much as humanly possible? Cause that's what happened to me in COVID. I know it was hard and it was a pandemic and all these things were happening. My experience was completely different. I got to spend more time with my family than I ever had before. And it was just like a drug. Yeah. And I know cause I've done a lot of them. <laughs> um, allegedly. Yeah. But like I was just tapped into like I just want to be here with them as much as possible because I love them. I do. I love yeah. them more than anything. I love my yeah. daughters and I love my wife. They're yeah. incredible. Yeah. Like we and made a fort for a month. Yeah. It was awesome. And so is that the the goal for you personally now is to just continue to do that and Yeah. Yeah. I mean in a perfect world I would uh keep the home I have now, sell it in a few years, make a farm. And then do like some like veterans retreats there. Yeah. Right? Like that's yeah. like a, a bunch of drugs and I mean, yeah, yeah. you, you want to come down? You can come yeah. down, man. All right. Yeah. No, no, I just, we've tried a lot of ways to get better. We've got to try different ways, and yeah. that's what I want to do. Yeah. No, I think it's I think it's awesome. I, I love what you have going on. The The whole brand that you've built around uh, thank you, thank these you. signs is really cool, and, and uh, yeah, I'm, I'm proud of you, and, and I love what you're doing. So, Thanks, man. Yeah. Uh, and I appreciate you taking the time to come here and talk about it. Um, is there anything else you want to talk about before we uh, close it out? No. I can't think of anything else. Um, a smart ass joke, anything? No, just Epstein didn't kill himself. Yeah. You you heard it here first, and uh, well, shit, man, I appreciate it. Um, for those of you listening, uh, thank you. Is there any shout outs you want to give or any uh, anything like that? Uh, shout outs. Uh, get all your coffee from Black yeah. Rifle, Derek Carver. <laughs> thanks, I love you. Uh, yeah. Ryan Madden, you're one of the best men ever, and uh, love you, girl. See you soon. Yeah, amen. Uh, for the listener, thank you for your uh, unwavering support show after show. I appreciate it. Uh, if not for you, we wouldn't be able to do what we do. So thank you guys. If you didn't enjoy it, feel free to choke yourself. And until next time, this is Mike Drop.